Welcome to the Injustice 2 Pro Series online tournament for the Northeast region, presented by PS4. I am EGP Wonder Chef, joined by Ringe, the wonderful yeah. Ringe. So, so happy to have you here, man. I'm glad to be here, man. Injustice 2 has definitely been the game that has been taking up the most amount of my time lately. So I'm excited to get a chance to cast it with an insane bracket of top eight players that we have five of the top eight from EVO all in this bracket for the Injustice 2 Pro Series online for North America East. I am excited. I know. I was I was saying earlier that this is basically EVO round two. There's really no other way to put it. We have so many of the players that were top eight or top 16 at EVO all in the bracket. Some of them were eliminated early, but like you said, five of them made it back into that top eight. Um, let's take a look at the bracket, actually. Maybe oh, look yeah. at the matches that we have for today. So, of course, starting off with the first place player at EVO, Nobles Dragon. I mean, there's really not much else that needs to be said about him. And he's going to be playing against Biohazard. Now, Biohazard is one of the players that didn't manage to uh, make it quite into that top eight at EVO. But he really worked hard to make his way here today. He actually beat two players that were in that top eight to make it all the way here. Yeah, so many of these names speak for themselves, right? But Biohazard, you know, is still relatively known, always, always having consistent performances at majors for Injustice 2. So it's not like he's any stranger to top eight, you know what I mean? Oh, Even yeah. though he didn't make it at EVO. And then, of course, on the other side of Winter Semis, we have Echo Fox, Sonic Fox, and an NRS player that speaks for its himself. <laughs> that name is all well known throughout the world. And then we have Noble Samij on the other side. Thought to be the best Catwoman. Of course, Catwoman been a pain in a lot of people's rear ends <laughs> here in Injustice 2. And we'll see how Sonic Fox handles it. He also mentioned on Twitter, right, he claimed that he is down to Mirror Samij in the Catwoman matchup. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I really want to see if he follows through. Sonic Fox is definitely one to make a lot of claims on uh, social media, but we'll see if that one goes through. And then on Blue's side, we have Tweety, Noble's Tweety, who is uh, one of the top Superman players in the entire world, really. Now, of course, we did see a Superman in top eight. That was Theo. Theo, of course, is here from SoCal, so he isn't able to enter this tournament. This is, of course, for only the east side of North America. Now, Tweety's going to be taking his spot in a weird way, uh, given some more Superman representation. And he wasn't able to actually make it to EVO, so I'm excited to see how he's going to end up doing in a match that Theo wasn't able to overcome, which is everybody's favorite player to watch, the somehow teamless Honeybee. This is true. We're going to have Honeybee in this match. Of course, taking second place at EVO with Flash, a character that a lot of people thought was a little bit underwhelming in Injustice 2. But when he gets close, we see that he has that overwhelming nature, that aggression still in him. The mix-ups are very hard to block. And of course, the damage when he gets the trade going oh. is insane. So we'll see Honeybee versus Tweety, a matchup that you mentioned we saw at EVO. We'll see if Honeybee can continue with dominance in it. Or if Tweety has some answers that Theo might not have thought of at the time. And then, of course, there's the last match in Losers, which is going to be Vidon, who, I, in my opinion, is, of course, a great player, but the probably the least known out of this ridiculous top eight. But that really shows that maybe he should be as known as the rest of these players. Now, Vidon, we've seen him do pretty well recently in a few other tournaments uh, using, I believe, Dr. Fate, which is another character that we don't see. Of course, his opponent, though, is known for playing Robin. So Dr. Fate Robin, that's a matchup we really don't ever see ever. <laughs> two, uh, two pretty rare characters there on the bottom of Loser's Bracket. And uh, I mean, two great players piloting them. Hayate, of course, another one that made top eight at EVO, made fifth place, uh, been making top eight at pretty much all of the IPS events. Uh, just really showing that even with a, a character that's not considered one of the best, you can still be a dominant player. Yeah, we were talking about it before the event went live, right? About how surprised we are at, at how well he's doing with Robin. Not to take anything away from Hayate, of course, a very talented player in his own right. But we think, you know, Robin's one of those characters that I like to describe as, you know, fulfilling to play. You know, he's got yeah. some struggle to him, but if you can make it work, then it's it's all the more satisfying. And Ayate has continued to make it work throughout all of the series in the Sense of Justice 2 has released. Yeah, he has always been known for playing a little bit less uh, common characters. And uh, for some reason, I guess he just likes sword characters. He, <laughs> in Mortal Kombat X, he did play. Uh, oh, swords are always good. Always been on swords. Uh, <laughs> But uh, he played Ronin Takeda, who was, of course, the sword character of that game. And then, of course, going into this one, he just immediately found his character with Robin. He's kind of been going back and forth as to whether or not he wants to stick with that character. But uh, looks like in the end, that's pretty much what he's been sticking to. But he does have a side Batman, which we might see a little bit later. But 
I think it's gonna it's gonna depend on the matchups that he runs Fighters into. Uh, of course, City. like I said, the first matchup he's gonna run into is gonna be Doctor Fate, and I really don't uh, know how that goes at all. But it looks like we do have our first match potentially ready. Oh, and he did go Harley Quinn, Dragon going Black Adam. Oh yeah, so so Dragon now of course one Evo using primarily Aquaman, but a little bit of Poison Ivy. Now he also has a Black Adam. We've been seeing him play back Black Adam quite a bit recently. Uh, there was actually a really really good match between him and Coach Steve on Coach Steve's uh, stream from this tournament, actually, earlier uh, yesterday. Yeah, of course, Coach Steve also would be into, into the Northeast bracket. We have the Harley Quinn stuff in the corner now and a quick first life bar on the side of Biohazard. Of course, who I think unquestionably the best Harley Quinn player got the first health bar going, but of course, Dragon going to be going with that Black Adam stuff, so going to bring it back real quick. Yeah, even though he did get so much momentum early on with Harley, it's it can just, it can flip rounds just in seconds. In literal seconds, he can take an entire life bar. In fact, if he, oh, he, he's gonna get a lot of it right here. Shouldn't be quite enough to kill, but of course that gives so much screen carry, and ooh, good yeah. use of the coup. Ooh, Cupcakes get punished. Doing a little bit too carelessly. And the space where Dragon could easily dash up under it. Checks him on the dash in. Very nice. Not able to block all these gunshots. He did the double overhead, but he's going to jump in into the overhead gunshot. But really just so much space control. And uh, Dragon, known as a very patient player, but you can't be too patient against this horde of zoning yeah. that uh, it's Harley Quinn throws at you. And I really like what Biohazard did right there when he called the trade, right? He knew that Dragon would want to take the guys and die pick, so he just used the EX Cupcake. But of course, the life lead already shortening just because of the Black Adam damage. Oh, yeah, now it's in Dragon's favor, but nice gets the follow-up to the Cupcakes. Cupcakes are so important for this matchup because they control that space in the air that Black Adam always wants oh, to be in. Oh, the meter burn where he just drops the Dinosaur Skull on him. Very close match. The EX Lightning is going to make it even closer. Back three, but so much damage from the train, it shouldn't be quite enough to kill. One more hit for either Going player. down to the pixel in this first match. Push block wants to get him off. Oh no. Able to dive kick underneath the, uh, the jumping gunshot. And uh, it was all really because of that one push block. That was a really, really smart push block. He would have had to deal with uh, quite a few chip situations potentially or a mix up situation. But instead, he's like, just get out of here. I'm going to take it back Black to a space Adam. that uh, I'm more comfortable Harley with Quinn. Black Adam. And Fighters he clutched it out. Dragon, Atlantis. though, Dragon has always been known as one of the players with the strongest mental fortitude. So no matter how much of a life deficit he's at, uh, or uh, even a game deficit in a set, he is always the one that can come back, no matter yeah. what. Yeah, I want to bring up just his awareness in that situation, right? Uh, Harley's not a character that you commonly think to push block in the situation. And that was the first push block we saw the whole match. So it was just Dragon knowing his options very well. That is true. I think that might be the first time in competitive play that I've literally ever seen a Harley be pushed block. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it was definitely a niche situation, and he found the answer. Ooh. Good cross up. And this is starting like the first game did. Biohazard taking a little bit of a lead. It was a nice delayed wake up by Dragon, choosing to uh, kind of just get out of that mix-up situation. Oh, another has him in the corner at this point. Oh, oh up. That's not a real wake up, but he spaced it just properly enough. Oh, nice, uses the armor. Actually could have dropped a bomb on that and got the full combo and taken the first life bar, but instead gets punished and uh, takes the, his own first life bar. Yeah, that's definitely what I thought he was gonna go for, and then the bomb interaction was but... Yeah, maybe he just held down, or didn't quite hold down, body was, but still, just about tying it up. Good stuff by Biohazard, using the interactable to traverse that distance to get over the lightning. Okay, of course, again, gonna be controlling a lot of that space. He wants to jump in, just gets the cross up. I think he blocked the initial jump in, but just getting opened up by the string afterwards. Should be potentially some life back. Yeah, we're gonna see a little bit more life back for Biohazard. Of course, his name online is Wyoming. He said that for a very long time. Many, many years. No one lives there, man. <laughs> I refuse to believe that's a real place. It's like a perfect square on the map. But anyway. <laughs> of course, the 4 one 2 into the trade. He tries to throw, but great awareness from Biohazard. Not going to give him that free damage. Just wakes up with a stance. Both of, these both of these characters actually have no true wake-ups, but both of these players have shown that they're totally unafraid to try it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jumping over the lightning, just tags with a few gunshots and then interrupts his next try at it. Oh, and Ooh, the bomb is. is unblockable. Oh, and he's he did. again. Oh, he wanted to loop it, but he missed face. Oh, no. Gets right in there. 
Uh, just, there's no way to stop the EX Lightning. Even if Clash was available, EX Lightning is completely unclashable. Exactly. Is, uh, and again, just a Dragon making sure all his bases are covered, right? The Clash was already used, but he went normal directly into the EX Lightning. No chance at a break. Showing the clean play that we expect from defending EVO Champion. Yeah, exactly. It just knows exactly perfectly how to close it out, which is what he's done twice. And that was actually a really dangerous situation. As you can see, you can use that corner interactable on the right side of Atlantis infinitely. Yes. And it, every time it drops an unblockable launching bomb while you jump out of the corner. <laughs> so he literally just, Biohazard wanted to loop him over and over into that same exact situation. But didn't quite work out because Dragon was able to use that mobility. But we're seeing a switch to the classic Biohazard character. So th this is the character that we saw him really get known for in Injustice 1. Yeah. And ever since then, he's just been known for playing big bodies. Oh, oh, I can't believe he picked that up. Yeah, that was just, that was super <laughs> low. <laughs> yeah, he was on level 3 poison, so big damage and he blows up the armor. Oh my goodness. Oh, but he's in debuff, so none of this is going to do yeah. any damage. That's unfortunate. If he wasn't in debuff at that point, he could have ended it, but the meter burn interactable will be there. But again, Biohazard has taken the first life bar a lot of the time against Dragon. It's really been Dragon's adjustments in the second life bar and beyond that has netted him the victories. And we're already seeing Dragon start to make that comeback. But the big, oh, nice, good read. But actually, you can't do a normal jump to punish that command grab tick throw. You have to do an instant dive kick, which uh, obviously Black Adam is one of the few characters who can actually do anything like that. Ooh. Uh, but Buzz has him in the corner, but again, not a real wake up. <laughs> but when you space it from that far, I guess it's just uh, fortunate enough for Black Adam to get it going. Oh, with the debuff, that's a lot of damage. 537. That uh, just about evens it up. So just like you said, first life bar was almost one. Oh, it was almost a flawless oh, no. for Biohazard, but yeah, he needs to break I right there. And then of course the forward one two into the trait. Immediate break on the side. Biohazard wants to keep that life deficit even. But the big issue here is that that put him into debuff. Alright, it wasn't too much of a debuff, luckily. It was uh, just a level 1, but still... Ooh, the double 2! That was a really nice streak because he knew the Dragon was going to advance at him with the high string. Yeah, the forward one can get down to it all day. Oh, oh. he can't him to his armor, but he gets armor back 3 on his own! Trade's going to do some good damage. 409 just comes running at him. Nice oh. punish with the Vita Bird Lightning back to back! Oh. oh no. Okay, so what, what he tried to do right there was he went into that level 3 Venom. So Black at the very end of wins. that, there was essentially if he didn't get that kill within level 3 Venom, he was going to lose because he was going to be in that level 3 debuff. It was going to take forever and it would be very easy for Black Adam to like at least chip kill him out. But uh, level 3 Venom normally gives you projectile immunity. However, the lightning from Black Adam isn't considered a projectile. So he did a charge, which normally you could just walk through projectiles, has armor. Uh, didn't matter because Black Adam just Call that Black Adam privilege, my friend. That, <laughs> that is what that man does. And fortunately, Biohazard looked like good in all three games, right? Like he started yeah. off with a life lead every time, usually taking the first health bar. But Dragon, mental fortitude, one of the best mental fortitudes in the game, defending EVO champion, and put him on a strong character as Black Adam, 3-0. Yeah, that is actually extremely terrifying to see Dragon pick up a character like Black Adam. I mean, like, Aquaman wasn't already a strong pick. Now he's going to have picks for a bunch of different matchups. I mean, can you imagine if he chooses a better matchup than Aquaman in certain matchups? Like, oh, that's just too much. And the thing is, Aquaman is not a bad pick against any of the characters that Biohazard picked in this set, but yeah. he still decided to go with Black Adam. And I, I think we might have seen a switch had he lost, but... It was a 3-0, so he didn't even get a chance. Yeah, the only times we really saw him struggle was at the beginning of the matches, but for whatever reason, he was able to make the proper adjustments. Biohazard couldn't really reach his own conclusions in time and just fell victim to the dive kicks. So the forward one twos, the traits. And of course, Black Adam only needs so few of hits, right, because of the damage he does. So yeah. good stuff from Dragon in our first game. That, of course, is winner semis. He'll be advancing to winner's finals. Right, to play the winner of Sonic Fox and Samij, which is going to be just a ridiculous match. Uh, I don't, I don't know who Sonic Fox will pick. It's going to be, it's a big, real big toss-up because the the story here is that from Evo, okay, he said that he was. Well, first of all, Sonic Fox said that he was going to main Red Hood, 100. Yeah. But we've we've seen him say that for for Dark Side and Cold and Cheetah and a lot of different characters. But he said, you know, I'm going to play Red Hood 100, and also Red Hood bodies Catwoman. That's what he said. Okay. But in top eight of Evo, he got beat by Samij in that very matchup. He didn't switch at all, and uh, Samij won it out. But 
Now he says that he's going to mirror Samij because he says that Catwoman's the number one character in the game right now. So I don't know. We'll see if he sticks if he sticks with what he said. He, I don't know. We'll see. But then again, I mean, Samij is. We, I really can't talk enough about Samij because okay. Samij, he's always been a very good player, but especially Superman. near the end of Mortal Kombat X, he started just really showing up. He was one of the players who most consistently beat Sonic Fox, in, uh, especially in online tournaments, and really just, just making a name for himself. And then, of course, in this game, it's... Uh, oh, Arkham actually, well, you know what? Yeah. I was going to yeah. say, <laughs> it's all right. You got a lot of info on Samij, and we're going to learn more about him later, but we're going to go to loser's bracket action right now. Currently, we have maybe some technical issues with the other side of winners. We're going to be going to Honeybee, second place at EVO versus Tweety, one of the top Supermans in the country, in the world, that did not get to make it to EVO. So we don't know how he stands up against the competition on the biggest stage, but he's here in top eight for the Injustice 2 Pro Series Online. Well, right now he's in a dangerous Ooh, the spot. delayed wake up. Oh, yeah, that was the exact perfect option to get out of the situation, and this should even it up. So much damage from Superman when he lands straight combo. Oh, actually, maybe could have done a background bounce finisher, but, you know, just taking its take, taking the solid choice, making sure to get more screens that he can zone, build some more meter. Exactly, and I think that's really the name of the game for Superman in this, right? The patient style of Theo, I think, is what's most effective for playing as Superman in this game. Honeybee's going to try to blow that up, of course, and using that low normal to option select right out of the wake-up attempt from Superman. Yeah, very smart. That's going to be even better once the new patch comes out. They make a flying punch a high, but it's not yet, so he's got to watch out for that. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. trying for the empty jump low. Great block from Tweety, but he's not out of the situation yet. Thrown back into the corner. <laughs> oh, was that a read on the wake up <laughs> rising grab? I don't know, but uh, it wasn't the read on, on getting hit in the face with a toilet. I'll tell you that much. I'm going to go oh. for a swirly. I see you. That was actually a really good dash under. That uh, totally gave him a ton of space. But wow, nice cancel on the running man run from uh, Honeybee. Wow, goes with the low and then goes with the forward three, takes the grab after the plus frames. Oh, and then just goes with the forward two right in the mouth. Honeybee waking up with something that wasn't going to beat it. Now, both of these characters, especially when they have their phone in the corner, can easily take a life bar in two hits. Yeah, for sure. Oh, and down two is actually unsafe. He tried to punish, but he got a mistaken input. Instead, he got the rising grab instead of forward two. Dust. That is just the classic yeah. Superman input error, yeah. and it's death. So he instead of getting half Honeybee's life, he had to clash. That's huge. He's going to get the EXI spread, get the corner combo here. I believe Honeybee still has access to clash, but he's not even going to use it when the down twos are coming in hot and heavy. Nice tech on the throw, of course. Still takes a little bit of damage from tech throws in this game. Nice, remembering that he has the low string option off of that. Got hit by a one, it's not gonna happen again. Oh, and a nice, good good choice to throw back into the corner. And nice down two, doesn't get the conversion. But again, another down two on, a, again, what had to have been a mistaken rising grab instead of a forward two. We've seen that happen three or four times already that set. I know Tweety's not happy about that. It breaks my heart. I know you've actually been playing a fair amount of Superman in this game as well, so I yeah. know that it breaks <laughs> your heart just as much. Um, yeah, it's the classic Superman error as you put it, and it can cost you so much, right? You go Super into the air and it's just like, the man, this is not leaving me at a good position at all, completely vulnerable to a punish, and uh, Honeybee's too good to let an opportunity like that pass him by, all right? Right, when he, he punished it every single time, uh, and of course, the, the punish from Flash is more than enough to make a huge dent in the uh, sort of life race that they're making, but, you know, Tweety, he's got another chance. He's... He, if he had landed all of those forward twos, two separate ones were punishes. And of course, each of those punishes would have been huge damage. Instead, it swung the other way. So if, if he can just stay solid, not let that get to his head, not, not really let it put him on tilt, then uh, he can still make it. Yeah, and right, he didn't get like a single corner position either. As you mentioned, Superman does incredible damage, has really good mix-ups in the corner. If he can get that one situation going, it could uh, be an easy W. Again, to see him uh, doing the, the max damage ender, but choosing not to, uh, again, background bounce. Nice forward two in the wow. meter burn breath. What a hit confirmed. Ooh, wow. just straight forward to three. It's a little bit better online than it is offline, <laughs> as we see Honeybee get caught swinging there. But also, he, he just knows that the speed of Flash's normals, ironically, oh, the is double around. overhead. The, the dirtiest mix-up, yeah, and that is so much damage. We've seen Honeybee make comebacks before. That actually could have been uh, a forced clash, but oh, he's giving him a chance. No, the, the down one, that's going to stop a lot of momentum. Yeah, and ooh, nice, a flip out. I like it from Tweety. Really trying to keep all that momentum on his side and not let Honeybee get the space back. Ooh, but he's catching him low, just the meter burn. 
knocked out to the Rain Man mix up. Oh, with the rising grab, of course, ducking it once again. Yeah, it's interesting that he's still choosing to do rising grabs because we've seen them be options like just by the fact that he's got a two hit, hit confirmable low. Yeah, I'm surprised he hasn't at least tried the Superman punch, right? On yeah. up at least once. The other great thing about Superman Punch is that as you do it on Wake Up, it kind of brings you back and brings you into the air, so it might dodge that low exactly. and just be exactly what it needs. But, you know, Superman this was a wins. hugely different game than we saw in Game 1. I mean, that was very much in uh, Tweety's favor. He, he didn't let the mistakes get to no, him. No, <laughs> and I think it's what we talked about, right? These characters are so dominant and oppressing in the corner. We saw mm -hmm. Tweety get his turn in the corner this time. Superman. Got the double overhead the mix flash. up with the dive bomb set up. And from there, it was just... A, it's, um, I was going to say Samij, but Honeybee um, just completely backed into the Fighters corner. Found his way out eventually, game. but at that point, it was too much of a life deficit for a rushdown character like Flash to deal with the superior zoning of Superman. Right, especially when he can really force so much chip on you, but uh, he's really, that, that's what he's going to have to do. Just That's, ju that's just the matchup. Honeybee is going to have to lock down Tweety. He's going to have to get him into the corner. This is a great start, exactly what he needs, but he's really going to have to never let him get out, and what a check on the the Sonic Pound, just a down one, not even a down two. That must that shows a lot of matchup knowledge, right? Yeah, there. for sure. Oh, the down two has been working out so well for Honeybee. Even gets the interactable for the combo a little bit more damage. Oh, canceled the forward three. That was super sick. Yeah, that was a, a finally we're seeing him wake up with the Superman punch though, and it, it was of course a safe wake up because he woke up with meter. Ooh. Oh, again, catching Honeybee, not blocking low after that string. It's the second time he's gotten hit by it. Oh, next breath, yeah. Still going to be Superman's turn at this point. Oh, interrupts. Oh, twice he could have gotten a full combo, but instead he just went for the final hits of the string. Nice push block just to get rid of trade. Oh, yeah. that's that. Really good awareness from Tweety right there. That's Blocking the jump, an immediate push block. Oh, it just goes with the down forward three. Oh, it doesn't go with the double over at that time. I'm surprised it's not going into the low. I believe that second one was supposed to be a dive bomb. That's why he just got the standing three as soon as he landed. I've had yeah. that happen to me a couple of times as a Superman player myself. If you see an awkward standing three or an awkward jumping three on the way up, most likely it's a dive bomb. Yeah. Oh, nice punish. Knows that that's fast enough. You but uh, that was a real big risk because if can. Tweety had meter burned it, actually, oh yeah, he did. He had the meter to meter burn it. If he'd meter burned it, that would have been a big punish. That one after, which is Honeybee getting a little overzealous. Just playing patient, wow. oh, misses the full conversion because he used four two down one to four two three, but. This is big. Is he gonna go in clashable? He is. He is yeah. Oh, <laughs> throws a tire at him. Throws it back to back. Time wave through it. Goes to the trait. Gonna pick him up. He needs a setup here. It's not a lot of damage. Oh, uses the hard knockdown. But that was so much chip and what? Oh, the rising grab. I really think that that may have been another input mistake. That's exactly I, what I was gonna ask I you. Really <laughs> <laughs> it was. I mean. I think Tweety might say that that was the best read of all time, 100% knowing that he was going to do the Sonic Pound, but I think it may have been an input mistake. I think it might have worked either way, still. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was the perfectly matched way to uh, end that round. So Tweety, up 2-0. That's, that's really two big. 2-1, two I'm sorry. Yeah, 2-1. Right. Well, uh, but uh, okay, up two games regardless, and that means that he just needs to win one more. He's doing really well, but... Honeybee, he's got that mental fortitude. He's known for comebacks, especially with a character that's great at comebacks. So if he can get that sort of mental momentum, he can easily just, you know, rush him down in the corner, bait everything he does, and just kill him in three hits. <laughs> yeah, I feel like being the best Flash player, like, comes with your play style gelling with that type of character, right? So you're going to be used to these situations. You're going to flourish in these situations. But, of course, Tweety is going to be looking to continue to exert the dominance of Superman. You know, I, I didn't talk about this earlier, but these two actually have a very, uh, I don't know what to call it, but they have a history with each other where mm -hmm. they really don't like each other. Oh, interesting. Okay. There are, there's a lot of strife between we call, the two. We call that beef where I'm from. <laughs> in oh. It's uh, it's definitely beef. Okay. They, they've oh, been just beefing just since the beginning of Injustice 2. Uh, Tweety actually thinks that Flash is a top character. He thinks he's one of the best oh, characters in the game. Okay, okay. And so it's over that, huh? Yeah, that among other things, uh, among just kind of pride and and talk of, of new players doing well versus old players. But wow, what a nice whip punish! Yeah, 
Yeah, going into the Shrek combo is going to be huge damage. And the mix up. Oh, but the delay rise again. Gonna yeah, give Tweety some momentum and damage before that first health bar runs out. Great whiff this punish on the Wago, but uh, Honeybee with the immediate clash doesn't want to suffer the consequences. I gotta say, Tweety's. Ha he easily has the best usage of delayed wake up of any player that I've ever seen, which is so important in a matchup like this where your character, your, your opponent's gonna be mixing you up every single Oki up. Yeah, you see, Tweety has been really just. Taking those situations where he takes a step back or back dashes, and it's letting Honeybee swing and whiff punishing a lot more. I think that's what's led him to the success he's found in this set. Yeah, the, the neutral here is definitely going to be a little bit in Superman's favor. Ooh, that could have been a punish, but he yeah. used the normal that was a little bit too slow, I think. And now he's going to have to avoid so much chip. Oh, but that's a good start. He might get the combo. Oh, you know what? That would have been a huge combo, but there was only just a little bit of life left for Tweety, so Tweety knew that he could more safely challenge him, and Tweety, with a full second life bar, yeah. knocks Honeybee out of the tournament. 3-1. Able to do what Theo wasn't able to. No, yeah, and then 3-1 had the game to spare as well. Of course, that was loser's bracket action. We didn't play the other set of winner's semis. We went straight to losers for a match here of Honeybee, second place at EVO, out of the tournament, and Tweety, again, beating somebody that that placed very high at EVO, obviously, without even going to the tournament himself. I really wonder how he would have placed. Superman, a strong character, Tweety, one of the best on him. It would have been interesting to see what he would have done at EVO. Yeah, Tweety has been a very strong player for a very long time, and uh, really he hasn't been able to show up too much for this game. So I'm really excited to see how he does uh, continuing moving forward, especially with all this news of the recent patch. There, I mean, that that's really not too... Uh, overall, the news is pretty good for Superman. Yeah, overall, for sure. I mean, for sure. well, potentially been based on really what the damage change is. But yeah. uh, overall, I mean, he's a Superman player. And also, he, he's told me personally that he's a player who he flourishes more and more as the game's life goes on and on. So uh, throughout the first few months, maybe, he says he usually doesn't do too well, which obviously isn't the case because he's doing great. <laughs> but he thinks that he does better and better as time goes on. He, he learns kind of slower, yeah. but he, he ends up a top player in... Uh, in his own opinion so already i mean looking good though that's something that always really interested me in every scene right is the the players that learn and excel at different paces right we always have like those week one those month one monsters yeah like you know in different games i think li joe is very good at that in these various fighting games that he's into <laughs> and he's like very much a month one monster and then you have guys that take a little bit while to get developed but then end up being top eight later i don't have example directly off the top of my head, but Tweety considering himself a player of that nature, but already finding success in the, the early life of Injustice 2. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it, it is really interesting because so many people just like learn differently and, and some people do better at different types of events or you know, some people are better when they're closer to home or it's just everybody plays so differently and yeah. you really get to see kind of like in the, the mindset of the competitors, which is always Cat so cool woman. to see. And I like all we have oh. our other side of winter semis, and it looks like Sonic Fox is living up to his claim so far, and is looking to Fighters attempt a mirror match Arkham against Asylum. what is thought to be the best Catwoman in the world, Samij. Yeah, so he, he's going to stick with it, and I'm really interested to see this, because Sonic Fox was never much of a Catwoman <laughs> player throughout this game, but he's looking like one that already, <laughs> waking up, they, they both starting off with a Catwoman special. I guess uh, great, great minds think alike, but... It looks like, so Samij will be the more purple Catwoman, and the darker Catwoman's gonna be Sonic's. Yeah, she's walking the all black. Got the purple nails on the side of Samij. We're just getting opened up so far. The back three wall bounce, of course. Ooh, the full Cat Claws for Sonic Fox. Gonna do enough damage, my goodness. Wow, okay, so that, that actually was very telling. That last combo that we saw in that round, because that's not a normal combo. That's not actually a combo we've really seen almost at all from any Catwoman, but it was super optimal, and it was just enough to kill. And I mean, already Sonic Fox has almost 100% life lead, which of course yeah. is, is going down as we speak, but uh, that shows that he's he's not just saying it as a joke. He definitely has practiced Catwoman quite a bit. Ooh, I'll meet your bar armor back three with my own armor back three. I expect nothing different in Catwoman mirrors. <laughs> No punish. Oh, yeah. Could have got a 1-1-2 one, one, punish at least, but all right. Back to whatever works. All right. Samij still has plenty of life to work with at this point to bring it back. And we see the damage output capable of Catwoman when she gets the full trade. Wow. Just dashed underneath the jump, too. What an option. So that's one of the tools that everybody tends to complain quite a bit about for Catwoman. But Samij showing that he knows how to fight his own tools. Yeah, that was crazy. 
great space on the dash under. He's slowly taking this life lead back. He's got great corner positioning. Oh, and then a back throw from Sonic Fox. So he's going to take the corner for himself. Just ease the jump in. I'm not sure what Simi's tried. If it was a late anti air, if he thought he was going to cross up. And he accidentally broke the second hit of an. Oh no, that is a missed punish. That is huge. Sonic Fox didn't have the meter. That would have been the kill, but. Oh, either off the tree, the back three, just blocked and then jumped out of. Sonic Fox has his lively back, gets the low from long distance. Oh, <laughs> jump back two, baby. And Sonic Fox already making a statement, winning the first game in the mirror with potentially the best, definitely the most successful Catwoman definitely in the entire the world. Definitely the most successful, Samij. What was, it, what was it again? At Evo, fourth place? Fourth place, right? Yeah, I think it was fourth place. Oh, and of course, like we said, Samij was the one who eliminated Sonic Fox. So the fact that he's cho chosen his character and saying, you know what, I can beat you with your own character. That's uh, sending a message. It is. And to that's, put it lightly. That is the ultimate Sonic Fox message, too. We've seen him so many times before. He'll either play someone in the mirror intentionally or he'll choose the character of the person that he just beat. I, I don't know why he does that, but he just, that is just Sonic Fox. He loves making that point. Oh, trying to whip her out of the air, but a backdash. Still no first hit has been awarded this round. Both players expecting the patience. Finally finds the low for Sonic Fox. He's going to have the meter advantage. Great down two from Smeech, though. Whoa, that was an empty jump normal. It wasn't even empty jump low, it was an empty jump high. Like, I don't know exactly what he was baiting right there, but it worked perfectly. Yeah. He was on another level. <laughs> oh, again, anti airing, staying solid, but he doesn't get the second hit of the car. The cap off. Yeah, he actually could have got just a, a very nice meatless combo, but instead, yeah, the, the fact that he dropped that combo, now he's losing so much momentum. He's in this corner. Now, let's see what the Sonic Fox setup is. He's done a lot of ambiguous jump ins, but. Oh, he's looking to be the wake up. He did, but he couldn't get the punish in time. And we're seeing a lot of neutral jump one from both of these plays. It's a really good way to bait either forward advancing moves or wake oh, up. Oh, was that a whiff punish? I I can't tell if that was the best read of all time or the best reactions of all time. Yeah, it, was, it might have been a combination of both. Either way, Sonic Fox putting on display was made him so successful in his FGC career in general. Samich playing a little bit more defensively. Now, these characters can actually play very well against themselves as a, a, a really defensive play style. Because Catwoman can run away from characters that have to physically hit her really well. Oh, wow! Was that a wake-up jab? Wait, what exactly was that? I'm not sure. Sonic Fox got a little bit overzealous to Samij. Was looking to close the life lead however he could with swinging with buttons. And Sonic Fox, I think, like you mentioned, he could go back to zoning. And I think he wanted to just get too aggressive. He ended up paying for it. We have a very even game now. And Samij is looking to take it back for himself. You broke into a parallel universe for the biggest score of all time. Interesting. <laughs> and that was, a, that was a really smart break because Catwoman's quarter damage is ridiculous. It's both easily players. like 600 damage. Yeah, both players have full claw. Sonic Fox gonna spin his. Oh, and again, th this match, just like the first round, is going down to the very last bit of life for both players. But this might be enough. Oh, oh nice flip out play, good catch! Still keeping the combo, so it's scaling. Sonic Fox still has one chance, but it is quickly dashed away. Samij gonna tie it up 1 1. Very nice. That that catch out of the flip was beautiful. And yeah, like you said, the only reason it didn't kill was because it keeps the scaling. It actually adds a little bit even more scaling to the combo I didn't know that. when you flip out. So yeah, that's why it did such little damage. But he was very smart to decide to end it in a way where he could get a little bit of a mix up and just had to uh, close it out with a good and neutral. And that's exactly Fighters what he did. But Atlanta. no hesitation from Sonic Fox. Wow. Directly back into the rematch, directly back into the mirror. Of course, both games have been very close. You know he wants to send that message. It's a it's a very interesting mirror because both of them have these long range tools, but they both want to get in a little bit closer than that. So it's a, a pretty I don't know it's a pretty wild matchup. And yeah, Sonic he, he's been close both games. He won one just by about 20 percent. He lost one by twenty percent. And I'm sure that that wouldn't be enough to make him give up, especially when he's trying to make a point like this. Definitely not. Open up early from Samish. Can he keep it going? Nice block on the cross up. Oh, we'll try to chase with the back three with a back dash from Catwoman. Foiling one of her own best moves. 
Oh, that is the Catwoman stuff that I expect to see. Yeah, we've actually seen quite, uh, I don't, not, not quite as many back threes as we, I would have expected from a tame. Catwoman mirror. It's been tame when it comes to the back threes so far. But I'm looking for armor back three against armor back three a lot more. It's one of the back threes that doesn't go over it, so that's the, the perfect read. Mage relying on a solid play. Oh, 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 oh. All right, so that's a really cool setup. That uh, We call that the crazy because he kind of, the crazy from SoCal kind of like made that in, in Justice 1 where you actually, you dash through them and then meter burn to come back and hit him with a cross up on wake up. But uh, I guess Sonic Fox, he did a delayed wake up and avoided the entire thing or he jumped or something like that. He woke up with the, uh, the oh, Catwoman. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. The, the Invisible Catwoman special that allowed him to bypass it. I was too excited to see the setup. We haven't seen the setup oh, for a very long time. Yes, oh, sir. And we saw the usage of that interactable a little bit earlier, so if we end up on the right side of the stage, it could be pretty scary for whoever's on the left. I was gonna say that interactable was there for Sonic Fox. You want to close the distance, but he's not gonna take it. Of course, always have to be aware of the long distance option from Catwoman because of that whip with the back three whip punish. Oh, and he tried that advanced combo that we saw him do game one, but he dropped it this time. That's a lot of damage to leave on the table. Yeah, I mean, it started off with a raw back three, right? Never want to leave a hit like that. Ooh. I'm surprised he let that back three go. A, a lot of these players, especially the Cat 1 players, they're really good at seeing when their back three is going to catch something. And if they see it not catching anything, they'll just back dash right out of it. Oh, what? Yeah. You can, it's so uh, awesome to see, like, the, the range that the Cat 1 mirror has played at. Armor back three and then the Arnold inter Interactable to get him off. Oh! That was a great bait out by Samiz right there, and then an immediate whip punish. New Sonic Fox will press a button in response. Takes the two bars, gonna do a little bit of damage. Oh, Sonic Fox though, doesn't have any meter to continue the combo. Oh, that's enough. Nice, What? A, that was a beautiful conversion. Just landing the very end of the forward one after the jump back whip. And uh, Samiz saying, hey, get off my character. <laughs> yeah, he's taking the lead 2-1. Of course, this is the other side of winner semi, so whoever loses is still not out of the tournament. I think that's what I wanted to get into was uh, it's really awesome to see the range that the Catwoman mirror is played at, right? Because right. they respect each other's like long distance Fighters options so much, like whether it be the cat dash, whether it be the back three, whether it be the whip, the jump, or the ground one with the low. They're playing at that distance where they're just out of range of the, those options. Begin. And so it makes for a real interesting, uh, yeah, again, see, they're going to be at that long distance. It makes a real interesting... Uh, just distance that they're at for the neutral game to be played. No, it, exactly. That's what makes it so interesting because they play at that distance so that they can make that one right read and then get in close because that's, of course, where she she really has her biggest strength. Exactly. But the real big surprise here is that Sonic Fox locking himself in to Catwoman. So I love he is going for, for the whole thing right here. And he's, he's already starting off strong in the fourth game. Yeah, absolutely. Looking at put it into the first health bar, and he does. So much damage from these combos that he's doing. It's really interesting. That's like a Sonic Fox only combo. Yeah, I was gonna say he's showing off how optimal he is with his character. If you just find a few more hits, he'll be able to take another game. No response from that interactable drop kick in the corner. I'm surprised. Interesting bait right there. Just jumps back off of the. Uh, I mean, again, pretty much from anywhere on this screen, a good read from Catwoman Ooh. can catch you doing anything. Interesting, both Catwoman players choosing to dash in at the exact same time, ducked it and tried to punish on the landing that time. So the reason why Sonic Fox is using that, that cartwheel so much is that it's, it's overhead that's plus on block. So if you respect the jab afterwards, then he can just do it again over and over. And then of course, it's just like any other pressure tool, but the fact that it's forward advancing and overhead makes it twice as scary. And you see Sonic Fox, after gaining the life lead, I was gonna say has been real patient, but he let the armor back to reply. Fortunately for him, was not whip punished. All right, so this is definitely just a really hard footsie screen. And universe. I think it, what well, it is, is it's Sonic Fox trying to time. catch Samij moving forward. Yes. That has to be what it is. And th that's just a ridiculous hard read to make because, of course, Cat Dash from any distance is unsafe. So the fact that he's willing to make that risk in neutral is just crazy. Yeah, no clash available for Samij at this point. Of course, Sonic Fox down any meter to continue the combo. Oh, didn't get the hit confirm right there. Could have finished that up with something from the cat stance. Maybe the lead, but instead, yeah, Samij is going to have to do a ton of damage. Wow, that whiff just barely, and that one was definitely a whiff punish. Sonic Fox evening it up, and that was a strong game, too. I mean, after losing two in a row, being able to win that with more than one knife bar, that's big. That's exactly
exactly what I was going to say. He sends a message in just this game, not relinquishing even a health bar. He's going to take a 2-2, going to game five against Samij with his own character. But I mean, I feel like from Samij's standpoint, you can't get shook by this, right? Like, Sonic Fox, you're not the first person Sonic Fox has done this to. You're not going to be the last, you know what I mean? You have to approach it like any other match, like any other player. And I don't know how much practice he has in the Catwoman mirror, but I know he's very familiar with her options. And he's shown that he can beat Sonic Fox twice. See if he can do it a third time, or if Sonic will uh, put his money where his mouth is, so to speak. Right, and again, even though this is a high pressure situation for him, he can get a lot out of it. I and mean, if you can say that you shut down Sonic Fox from his claim, that's that's a really big, uh, I don't know, really claim that you can make yourself. Yeah, I mean, you already did it at Evo, right? You, you, yeah, have, to be, yeah. you have to believe in yourself because of that. That's the grandest stage in the mall. Ooh, a nice air-to-air -air with jump one. Jump one, you know, everybody talks about her jump two or jump width, but her jump one is one of the best jump-ins in the entire game for air-to-airs, for cross-ups, so wow. many different situations. The empty jump into the forward three, trying to beat a throw attempt, maybe? I think Ooh. it's exactly what that was, but Fox not falling for it. Oh. Wow. <laughs> the patience, man. It's hilarious to see them play this footsie game from this longer range, but this is the options that Catwoman's have. It is. It's not even footsies, it's whipsies from this yeah. range. <laughs> Oh! Mid to the face, no big damage, goes to the armor back three, but Samee just staying patient, ends up getting the low whip. Trying for the low starter on the other side. Oh, oh. catch a solid fox, walking back with the low. And that's a lot of damage, but not quite enough. Just that little bit of life could cost oh. a lot. Phoenix. Oh, wow, drops oh, no. the combo. That means no Oki. Okay, that's going to be really big, but another meter gone and two oh, meters gone. Savage. He wants so desperately to close that out. He managed it with the jump back whip, but he's already spent so many resources. That's all right, though. Sonic Fox, not too uh, keen on his own resources. Meter advantage, very even. Oh, catches the back dash with the low whip and then just dash up throw. That low whip read was 100% from just playing him throughout this set. Because he let it happen, he let it rock maybe two or three times before that, and it's finally, he's just like, you know what, I know 100% what you're gonna do. Oh, wakes up, I think that's the, oh, switches sides of the back three. Funky hitbox. Oh, just caught him with a whip high. Oh, oh the armor back three, the second oh, one wins, but it goes the other way. Unfortunate, but he gets the meter bird cat dash. Corner situation. Yeah, I was gonna say he's gonna meet bird bomb to get out. Immediate clash from Sonic. He had to be aware of that situation. Oh, and you know, Samich chose to let him clash right there because he had the meter lead. That means it's gonna be really one and any real solid hit away can do it. Oh, oh and he converted off the jump too. Oh, oh. gets the win. No Samich, I believe still has clash available, so he no. didn't want to continue with the combo. Not quite enough oh, to jump. Oh, no, no, punish with the EX clash. Oh, the EX cat dash, excuse me. The of course, what else could it end with than a cat dash read by Sonic Fox? So Sonic Fox beating Samij with his own character after losing to him at EVO. And uh, wow, that, that's a statement. But every single one of those matches was close. Ex well, maybe except for the second to last one. Yeah. But I mean, that last one was down to one hit from either player. And really, oh, the, it really all came down to that whiff. Samij, he, he dashed up and he did his trait because that would have been enough to chip, but he was just a little bit out of range, so it whiffed, it didn't do the full thing, and it, then Sonic Fox just put him into a bad situation, but every, almost all of those matches, super close, uh, definitely very, very close to each other in skill right there, but but Sonic Fox, that that's big. That means he's moving on to winner's finals, using a completely new character to him, and beating the potential top of oh, that yeah. character. Yeah, we've seen the, the mess of... Uh, oh yeah, actually, that, that could have got a lot three. better for, for Sonic Fox had both of those back threes. Again, not right here. Oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, those were actually really unfortunate. But oh, Samich, he had a chance, but just let it go away. Oh, At so the end right there, yeah, I'm so surprised Sonic wasn't looking for the meter burn interactable to escape. All the gadget characters, it's so hard to lock them down on the stage because of that. Right. And then, of course, the Clash. I'm getting 15% damage to Samij at this point. I really like the hit that Sonic Fox gets in a little bit here. Yeah, after this, he gets the... the, the that's all three. unclashable. And then right here, again, <laughs> yeah, doesn't press anything afterwards. I think he tried to hit with the down one. Oh, look at this range. Look at this range. Oh, just so close. Oh, oh then the meter burn. 
cat dash. Or do you even have meter for it? It might have just been a raw cat yeah, dash. Yeah, I guess it was just a raw wow. cat dash. But I think, I, I honestly, if there was a block right there from Samij, I don't know if it would have chipped. I think it probably would have, but I don't know. He, he made the right read, though, in the very final situation. And that's the clutch that you need to be uh, an, an EVO champion like, like Sonic Fox. Yeah, I mean, maybe man. not for this game yet, but definitely has in the past. So, uh, yeah, that was... That was really something. So that means that we're going to see Sonic Fox move on to fight Dragon. Yes. And uh, that's kind of a, I kind of want to say, like a faded Robin, match. That's, that's what I was going to say, right? I feel like a lot of people would have expected that to be EVO Grand Finals. Yeah. It would be a Dragon versus Sonic Fox. Um, two young prodigies, of course. Fighters I believe um, Dragon's, what, like 19 going on 12 or something like that? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, but, and then Sonic Fox, of course, I think he's barely, maybe 20, barely, maybe. Yeah, two young prodigies, two incredible fighting game players, and we're going to see them in winners' finals. But, of course, we got some more losers action. We're going to have Hayate representing Panda Global, or Panda Gaming, versus uh, Bidon, one of the, uh, the resident Dr. Fate player that we're a little bit unfamiliar with. But if you got this far, you know that Dr. Fate's serious. Oh, definitely. He beat a lot of really good players. Actually, so even before that, so he lost round one of this tournament. Round oh, one. Wow. And this is a 309-man tournament. So this is not a tiny tournament. So he lost round one to Dragon. Oh, right. wow. oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not Dragon. Whoa, Fox. 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 Sonic Fox. Which Either is way. Equally <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. So then he had to go through so many players. He beat Silver Eye. He beat Destroyer. He beat Kevin to Man. He beat Zy Fox. He made it all the way back up to Losers. And now I'm sure he wants that run back with Fox. He's going to have to make it even further. But uh, right now, Hayate himself is uh, really kind of putting a damper on that. Yeah, but Vidon definitely looks more comfortable than I've seen any other Dr. Faye player in this game. Ooh. Even though he lost the first health bar to Hayate, I feel like the decisions he's making, the way he's playing, shows a confidence that I have not seen that replicated in any other Dr. Faye. Yeah, and the only, we really don't see too many other Dr. Fates. We did see uh, during the North American West online tournament, we saw a Dr. Fate, a lot more peanut, but they're few and far between. Oh, the glyph. Oh, Robin with a long distance sword. You are Taking a big warrior. life lead for Hayate. I've been training since birth. Of representing that Panda Global, a Robin specialist, made winners top eight at Evo and ended up taking home the fifth place prize. Ooh. And you know what? We, we did hear during the patch note stream earlier today on this very channel that they were going to make it a little bit more safe for Dr. Fate to use that glyph. And I think that this might be one of those matchups where uh, Robin can actually punish the glyph because he's got an extremely fast reversal special. And reversal specials technically count as one frame faster than they usually are. Yeah, I think one of uh, Robin's biggest strengths is his horizontal distance, right? The horizontal distance he covers with that sword, allowing him for a lot of easy punishes on the glyph, and Hayate taking a dominant first game. Did end up losing that first health bar, but Robin seemed very much in control the whole first match. We'll see if b can bounce back, and hopefully we'll get to him in the Dr. Fate. And, uh, I don't know if he really has a vortex, but... <laughs> A know, little get, bit. Get his offensive games going. Yeah, he's got some. He's got some really tricky stuff, especially Dr. if he can get his his kind of Robin. charged onks out, the ones that he summons three up. But also, he's got an ambiguous jump in, and uh, really, of course, his main goal is going to keep Robin out Fighters indefinitely, which playground. is going to be tough. Hayate. I mean, if you're a player like Hayate that has made it this far in so many tournaments with Robin, you know how to get through zoning. Exactly. Yeah, you exactly. have just that sense. He's got like. I don't know. Yeah. His, uh, his, his senses just tell him when there's a projectile coming. He, there, he, just like that! Exactly what I'm saying. Gets the hard knockdown. Ooh. It's the unblockable setup. So dirty! Incredible start for Hayate. Yeah, he puts the low battering out in the corner. He gets a little bit of follow-up. No meter for the continuous combo. Ooh. He's gonna flip out, trying to save that damage. Catches the back dash on the jump in. Oh. Like, Vidon wants this space with that sword from Robin and Hayate. Just reads been two on point. Yeah, and I gotta say, that was a really smart ender by Hayate, because normally he could have just ended in, in the sword flip or anything easy, but instead he ended in the side switch, which is a special that you usually don't see as a combo ender, except for in that exact situation, because he, was, he knew it was just enough to kill. Oh, wow, he actually absorbed the low battering with the armor back three. I really like Hayate's um, timings and uses of the trade from Robin. I think that's the big thing uh, regarding being successful with this character is making sure you're not predictable with your trade usage. Yeah, as soon as he throws down that, oh wow, nice. He uses it for a conversion. That's the strength of it. It's, it's low and it gets great conversions. Wow, stopping him from doing anything and that's a punish. My goodness. Hayate's gonna end it with a front throw. That is, uh, that, is, that is pretty dominant, but Robin again, I, w when we saw the stream earlier, I, I was literally asked, I was like, 
who who actually does punish Glyph? Because almost nobody can. Even the characters with the fastest advancing normals in the game, it's very hard for them to ever get a chance to punish Glyph. But this is the exact situation, and that Glyph is such a main part of Dr. Fate's game plan. Because he uses it to make all the strings safe, he uses it as a wake up, he uses it just to check people, and the fact that every single one of those can not only be punished, but full combo punished into Oki, that's huge. That's going to make it really, really tough for him. He's got to change up his playstyle, and when against most of the cast, you don't have to play a different playstyle like that, it, it might be tough for him to adapt like this on the fly. Uh, especially against a character like Robin that we very rarely see, and oh, again, just starting off with a strong opening. Exactly, what a tough draw for being on the tournament, right? Of course, Sonic Fox in the first round, going down, making it all the way back to top eight, and then going against Robin, a character that seemingly will be able to punish uh, Glyph for a full combo at will. And side switch. Yeah, again, he, he's great at trying to keep that space. He knows that he doesn't want to have to get back in on a character like Faye. Even though he's got this advantage up close, he's still got to get in. Wow, he just, he played footsies with his down two. <laughs> <laughs> when you have a sword, man, it's, it's amazing things you can do in the Footsie game, I'll tell you that much, as a sword player myself. Oh, but now, this is this is beat on spot. If he wants to make this comeback, he's got to make it here. Yeah, he had to get away from that trade. He's been caught by that trade a few too many times, I think. Oh, wow, what a great combo! That is actually one of the, the more damaging combos that he can get, and he used it by just having one red off, which is a very, very specific timing, and it's very tough to do. Oh, just the whiff punish. Won't be enough to get the kill, but the projectile follow-up. Catches Hayate, trying to get frisky on wake up. Yeah, so Beaton did manage to take back a huge chunk of life without even having to give up too much space. So he still has this entire life bar to just walk back, try to get a little bit more range, and ooh, that, nice block by Hayate. Knew, knowing that the third off did hit him. Yeah. See, Beaton has the life lead. Now, this is the first time we've really seen Dr. Fate able to flex his game, right? With a live lead, he'll be able to zone easily, more effectively. Ooh. Right, but uh, now, I mean, he's so close to being able to just chip out Hayate, but that is unsafe, like we said. You I like this splash, though. Still, while he has a, a significant enough life lead to where he can get this phase, take this damage that he's going to get right here. Obviously, yeah, take the damage and still have enough meter and juice in the tank to take this last bit of health from Hayate. Oh, and that one was actually out of range to be punished. I wonder if he maybe meter burned it or if it's different because he was in trait. So, the, the, of course, all of his special moves are totally different in trait. They do little different things. And maybe the fact that it was a red glyph was enough to, to push it back. I but it regardless, I mean, that was looking really, really good for Hayate again. Really good. But Vidon, he controlled that space. He almost never left that middle ground after he got out of that corner. He just controlled the entire Dr. center Fate. of the stage, just forced all of his zoning on Hayate, and it was, it was really good. Really yeah. solid. And I think once he got that life lead, he was like so comfortable, right? It seemed like he was like, okay, this is the Dr. Fate player we were expecting <laughs> to see in top eight. He got that life lead, made great use of the, the ongs, the tools that come down from the top, and as well as just the, the projectiles, the fast speed. Of course, Robin's gonna be trying to use either the dash, the assassin strike, or the meter burn roll. A couple of these ways to get in, but he seemed to be very aware once he had that life lead of the, the space he could control. All right, he's already starting up relatively strong. Oh, maybe not, but no full conversion from Hayate. All right, so again, this is this is the game he wants to play, but it seems like almost every time that he sets up one of the stopped orbs, Hayate just throws the trait, and it just connects on Beaton for some reason. All right, with a glyph, we gave him some space, and then met him in the sky right after. Hit him with all three. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Really good usage of the Ongs. You, you really don't see too many fates being really comfortable in using those, especially in zoning him. Oh, he walked back the other way. I really like his usage right now because he's really becoming unpredictable with when he's going to do what, and that's catching Hayate in the lights. You can see him being a lot more hesitant in how he's going to approach and is letting B Don control the pace of the match. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things is that Bidon was playing like Hayate was trying to get in hectically. But now that he sees that Hayate is respecting a lot of his zoning, he's setting stuff up. So he's summoning his onks. And you see, like, he, like now that he knows that he doesn't think Hayate is going to jump in that situation, he gives him time to set up onks. The onks give him more time to set up other stuff. And so he's controlling the pace based on respect that Hayate is giving him. <laughs> 
And you can see, yeah, Hayate, who had seemed like such a good read on getting in in the first two games, is very much struggling now. Does find his way after the meter burn roll. Ooh, meter burn for sword, and it caught beat on trying to get frisky afterwards. Gonna take that first health bar, but he has 35 health left to work with. Yeah, and against somebody with so many specials, it'll be so difficult to live here. And beat on, wow, he he is really, really turned this around. I mean, Dr. that looks like him. such a hopeless match for the first two games. Yeah, we were talking about how Robin seemed like maybe a very strong matchup because of the punish on the glyphs, and he turned around, makes it 2-2 in an instant. <laughs> I feel like we've barely seen one match, and it's already tied up. We're going to a game five. I know, and I can't believe how fast those matches were considering he's his own character. Exactly, right? like, what happened? <laughs> like, <laughs> it was just, yeah, it was great space control, great just always having something in Hayate's face, right? right? Hayate, like you said, was a, a lot more patient of a player. He's not gonna go in recklessly. He's gonna pick his spots carefully. He's gonna try to get the read. He's gonna try to figure out your habits for throwing projectiles. And once he saw that, Bidon really mixed up his habits very well. Right. And just uh, Hayate, you can physically see him get caught in the lights. He was just standing there crouching, <laughs> like not really jumping, not like meter burn rolling. He was like, what the hell is this guy doing? Like what kind of decisions that he's making? And that's exactly the type of situation you need. Great anti here to start it off. He's going to get the first meter because of that as well. And again, an extremely good conversion. I mean, this is a level of, I mean, I mean I've seen a, a bunch of other great fates, but this is a level of character familiarity, especially with conversions and spacing that I really haven't seen much from any fate. And also just, again, the usage of the onks in zoning is ridiculous. Yeah. I really feel that's a, a big thing that's throwing uh, Hayate off. Oh, the... And he found the read on the jump in that time. The onks were there to interrupt it. And I think that was actually a reaction from Beedon. He used the onk to cover himself as soon as he saw that he was getting jumped. Oh, and then again, he's using that space now. He knows how to make the sword reversal from Robin Whiff, and he's been punishing it consistently. Oh, -ho -ho! what a beautiful punish. Again, the onk usage is just ridiculous. I, I have never seen a fate play like this. This is just insane! Looks up right through it, tries to get his face with the meter burn roll. The ball was there, oh, tried for the anti here. Shoulder tackle once again, but couldn't get it in time. Hayate finally finding a big opening. Assassin Strike in there, but the glyph is there to anti air. It's so smart that he started using the glyph more as a spacing tool so that he can get it at a range where he can't be punished for. Yeah, that's so smart. Great adjustments from B down in this set. Hayate will able to take it a life bar though. Now, now it's match point for both players, where it looked like it was going to be a really one sided set, but beat on with quite a bit of an advantage here. Oh, he canceled it. The back three, I like it. Oh, down to it. Wakes up with a glyph and hit him from that longer range. Just meet up and rolls into the ball. Hits him low, four health left, and it will be a dead Hayate. Beat on brings it back three games in a row. Wow, that fate play was seriously. I'm, I've never seen anything like it. I that <laughs> is real. so cool. That is a completely different play style that we see from almost any fates. That was so there were so many different tools that we never see used, and the adaptation from just getting uh, really dominated within those first two games was amazing. And obviously, Hayate played really well, but. Really, it's I, I just can't not talk about that adaptation. That was amazing. Amazing job um, turning his weakness into a strength, right? Yeah. Like, even when you see adjustments from players, they'll shore up their weaknesses. They won't do that option as much. But he straight turned that weakness of getting punished on the glyph into a complete strength, figuring out the proper spacing to get Hayate to continue to do it, and then just whiffed and punished. And really just got, I felt like he confused him as a player to a level that I haven't seen very often, that I don't, I don't see very often. Especially with a player just like Hayate, who is just so good at, at, at just being consistent. He's He's been top eight, like we said, so many different tournaments in a multitude of games, and he's not one to really kind of look a little bit lost like he ended up against Vidon. Now, we do know that Robin struggles a little bit against zoning, but he I mean, he, he has the tools. We've seen him use the tools and beat on the first two games. Yeah, uh, handedly, like it was it was on the verge of free, and then the beat on just brought it back. Great adjustments, incredible play. Takes the set three two. He will be advancing in losers, and I believe that does. Oh, again, that down two over the interactable. But waking up with that glyph was so good. And when he got that range, he constantly set up the ball. Didn't let a meter burn roll for free. 
good stuff. But that will be our uh, complete first round of matches here in the top eight. So please do not go anywhere. We're going to take a quick five-minute break and be right back here on Twitch.tv slash NetherRealm.
and welcome back to the Injustice 2 Pro Series online tournament for the North American East region, presented by PS4. We are about halfway through this bracket, at least through this top eight, so uh, way further than that through the bracket, because <laughs> this is a 309-man tournament. Now, yeah. that is itself a major, right? Yes, That's of course. Like, yeah, like, like more than a major. So, of course, there are a few of these tournaments left. These players are fighting for IPS points, and we still have the East and West of Europe. So if you guys want to sign up for that, go to smash.gg. It is on the front page. It'll be the Injustice 2 Pro Series uh, online tournaments. We also, I believe, have South America, or yeah, South America South. South Global Latin South. America, South yeah, Latin, yeah, M, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah, make sure to check out, like you said, smash.gg. It is on the front page. We got the Europe calls coming up. I know there's going to be plenty of people in the Europe regions. If they're not watching now, I know they're going to be checking the VODs because the competition in this top eight is so ridiculous. I'll be surprised if anybody that's a real Justice fan is not going to be watching this top eight. Yeah, we were, we were saying it earlier. It's like EVO round two. And we've already seen some of the players get eliminated that were really far in that bracket. We've seen players that didn't get as far in that bracket get further. I mean, we've seen Sonic Fox. Now now he's in winner's finals beating Samij in the rerun. In fact, maybe can we get a chance to look at this bracket and see how it played out? So uh, it's not fully filled out here, but Dragon and Biohazard. Yeah, it was uh, pretty much in Dragon's favor the whole time. Ended up taking a 3-0 with a Black Adam pick. As we get it updated, as you can see right now, Sonic Fox and Samij, there was a Catwoman mirror. Sonic Fox claimed on Twitter that he was going to do it, and he succeeded, sticking with Catwoman through the whole way, taking a 3-2. So winner's finals is going to be a familiar winner's finals. Uh, if you uh, follow NRS games, which will be Noble Dragon versus Echo Fox, Sonic Fox. On the loser side, we see Tweety setting home second place at EVO 2017 <laughs> Honeybee home in the Superman versus Flash Mirror, a match that Honeybee won to make it into Grand Finals in the first place. And, and I got to say about that one, too, we see, you, we see you in chat, Tweety. So for those of you who didn't catch that, Tweety in chat, he said, GG is Mr. One Tournament Wonder. Oh, dang. So like I said, yeah, they do, they do, they hate each other. These players just do not like each other. And they go back and forth. They've, they've gone back and forth a lot of different ways, but... I think right now uh, he, Tweety's got that little bit of her hands, but you know, you know, Honeybee's gonna be—he's he's gonna come back for that. This is why I love the NRS scene, Wonder <laughs> Chef. You'll understand, man. When there's a new NRS game coming out, when there's new patches coming out, I mark it on my calendar as a holiday. <laughs> I make sure my Twitter is open on every device possible. All the NRS scene, all the NRS heads being followed—it's too entertaining. I love it. I love, I love the showmanship that Tweety is displaying. Oh yeah, Tweety. You know he's. He, he's secretly a nice guy, but he is the villain. He really is the villain. I mean, he's got so many people that don't like him. He's got some really some real opinions, and he's not afraid to tell you what he thinks about you. Hey, Superman is a bad guy in Injustice yeah. too. you feel me? He's, he's embracing the heel role. I like it. <laughs> you got to gel with your character on that level if you want to be successful. Oh, yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's definitely Superman. that guy right now. And, I mean, the fact that he's, he's proven himself time and time again. Uh, you really can't say enough about that, especially being one of the few Superman players who's been doing really well. Yeah, for sure. Superman thought to be a pretty strong character. Of course, from the main people we've seen show results with the character, Theo, uh, Tweety. We've seen Slayer play him here and there in top eight, but he's mainly been a Black Adam player so far in this first patch. All right, but now we're going to have Tweety going up against Samij. So this is going to be a Noble team kill, yes. unfortunately. Noble, of course, doing extremely well at EVO. Actually, the champion of EVO himself is Noble Dragon. So uh, unfortunately, not well, at least one will advance, right? So one of them is going to get further right here. And, and three of them have uh, surpassed past the first round of top eight. Right. It's crazy how well this faction of uh, players is doing. And of course, this is going to be Superman versus Catwoman. Uh, it can be tough for Superman in certain situations, of course, back three being forward two three, but we see the forward two three right there. Great whiff punish tool uh, if Catwoman gets careless. Tries the dive bomb, but a great interactable escape so far, and then the rising grab wake up is punished by Samij. The curse of Tweety. Every <laughs> time that he wants to get that forward two, he's going to get a rising grab. He actually <laughs> changed his controls just to try to avoid that, but I guess he must have changed them back. Interesting. Did he just turn off like the actual button layout, or he turn off like oh, alternate he, controls? He turned or? off like everything, like okay. all the alternate controls and the. the I definitely did too shortcuts. because of that, <laughs> <laughs> that input shortcut. Honestly. Yeah, it's uh, it, it happens quite a bit if you're Ooh. just a little bit wrong on that input. Ooh. Nice. Ooh. Yeah, goes uh, just after the armored Superman punch. Just goes with the armored back three. 
catches Samiz pressing a button, but Samiz responded with his own armored back three, opening up Tweedy in his second life bar, and an immediate clash is his response. Yeah, and ooh, very nice air-to-air -air by Tweedy, but the big issue is that he, you know, actually neither of these characters are gonna be able to get really big conversions until they built that bar. I guess they both have now. Both characters building meter pretty quick. Oh. Wow, I like that from Samiz right there. Went with the MD jump low and didn't finish the string. Just let the first hit rock and then go win for the throw. Definitely caught Tweedy off guard and he will wrap up that first game. Yeah, this is definitely, you have to play it very differently as Superman. Uh, obviously, the low profile works extremely well against Superman. It goes underneath pretty much all of his normals, but uh, there Superman. there is the opportunity to try to bait it and punish it just because Superman does have the, the great mobility that he does. Exactly. Uh, it's just, it's a weird matchup. You have to play it very differently. You can't zone as much as Superman. You can't just do your normal set of pressure. You have to play it almost like a, I don't know, you have to kind of go in and out and bait things and really try to maximize all of your damage. Yeah, I think you have to be real bait heavy in this matchup because Catwoman knows usually she has these uh, options that specifically counter Superman's options, that they'll look to them more than they will in other matchups. And I think because of that, they open themselves up, the Catwoman players, that is, to a specific bait. We'll see if Tweety takes advantage of that in this set. Or if Samij is uh, smart enough to avoid those altogether. Ooh, and wake up trade. That's something that's gonna be gone as soon as that new patch comes out. But in the meantime, use it. Oh, and that's a huge amount of damage and a weird bait. I think that was an accident. I think he tried to do one, one, two, accidentally hit one and two together, which is of course, Interactable. Yes. And uh, still, I mean, still gave him a strange sort of advantage there, and it did combo, so better than nothing. I really like that from Tweety right there. Of course, the gargoyles are unblockable. He played the mind game very well in that situation. Jumped back behind it, and New Smeej would take to the sky to avoid the gargoyles, so he just met him in the air. Oh, tried for the armor forward three to blow through the wake up. Wow. Oh, he's <laughs> still caught on fire. <laughs> My man is truly Superman. <laughs> Cape on fire and everything, looking to take the first health bar, and he does. Wow. Don't get up. I can't believe that. He, he literally just went through the flames. The cape was legitimately on fire. <laughs> I saw it. Oh, and this is going to be huge amounts oh, of damage. Oh, oh. 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 I like that from Tweety. You can really, uh, oh, no. people that are experienced against Superman, you can exploit that against them, right? Just the instant dive bomb because they're expecting a cross up or something that's going to take a little bit longer. Yeah, exactly. And of course, we, I talk about this quite a bit, but the risk reward is always going to be in Tweety's favor right here. He can play so risky because all right now he can lose is the end of this first life bar. Yes. Yeah, when you just have a pixel left on that first life bar, you're like, whether I get hit, I'm not going to get full combo. So let's get buck wild. Let's start the party. Wow, incredible patience wow. being shown from Tweety right there. There's a dash up, crouch block, trying to base something out for Samij. Samij just staring at him, finds the hit now. Close to the full trade as well. Oh no! And that could have been so much damage. Between just going for the down one, maybe a break. Oh, the rising oh. grab wake up gets punished in an immediate clash again from Tweety. And meter's about even. Both of them spending all their resources. Again, that's very scary for both these characters as their main conversions take a bar. And, oh, he just goes with the Superman punch again. Very unsafe without meter. That woman can't quite find her last bar for the trade. Finds it now. Oh, he air dashes out, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, the uh, the flip out was very smart, but really that entire situation could have been avoided except for Tweety is going for that 4-2 down one. So obviously we see a lot of 4-2-3 from Superman, his normal advancing normal, but Tweety Cat likes woman. to check with the low just to Superman. see what you're doing. Now, Samij definitely has that matchup experience because he knows that after the 4-2 down one, you can poke, and he, he's got, he got two or three separate combos in that set, Spiders and already that is ground. enough that it could have really made or break that set. Yeah, exactly. I was honestly expecting Tweety to run away with that game, but Samij, the matchup experience, taking the opportunities that he got and maximizing his momentum off of it. Well done. Oh, just meets him with a forward two EX breath to start the game. Pushing him towards the corner, of course. And no transitions on Joker's playground, baby. The corner is where you will stay. Oh, he tried for the fake dive bomb setup, but after blocking the jump two, just goes for the interactable to get out. A great option for the gadget characters. Ooh. That should be some good Oki off this setup. Oh, interesting. Jump back whip. That's a very nice setup, but uh, delayed wake up again. Like I said earlier, Tweety, the master of delayed wake up. Yes. Oh, down two. A whole lot of uh, Superman's ambiguous corner setups involve him jumping. So if the uh, jump is mistimed, if it's not a safe jump, so to speak, down two is always the solid answer. 
And like that, once more, we see another down two as Sweetie looks for an easy way out of the corner with the jump. Yeah, and Catwoman, easily one of the best down twos in the game. Has to be maybe even a top three down two. Not only on the fact that it, it lowers your hitbox and it's got a great hit, uh, hurtbox, or sorry, lowers your hurtbox, has a great hitbox, but the damage that you can get off it is really good meter list. Oh, again! Showing the matchup knowledge, interrupting the string once more. Cannot get that for free on me. Has the full trade as well. It's going to be big damage if she can spin it on the head. But a throw will be the first health bar for Tweety. And he could make this back, but I think the main thing he has to do is try to switch positions if possible. Yeah, in that range, you see the jump two come out. It's going to be controlling all of the space that Superman is going to be able to operate at. Takes the damage he can get. Wow. That was a little bit too far. It's going to be a tremendous turnaround. Goes for the cross-up, but the down two avoids it. Oh, and then the armor back three. Samish will take it 3-0 over Noble Tweety. Team kill finish. Yeah, like you were saying, you have to play that matchup very differently. It's not a comfortable matchup for Superman by, by any means. The tools are very, very strange in that interaction. But yeah. Tweety, especially, he went to his muscle memory, I think, a few too many times, going for four two down ones into the breath, getting punished for them. And, and then he had a chance. The mix-up didn't hit. Of course, like we were saying, the down two for Catwoman is amazing. Uh, but he had a chance. It's tough. He took the risk. And for Tweety, I feel like he's the one that put out the Superman mix-ups in the corner with, like, the EX breath and then the ambiguous setups, whether on which side. Right? That was him, wasn't it? Uh, I mean, partially. It's, it been a, it's been around for a very long time. Yeah, but I feel like he should have went more to those, right? Because a lot of the times in the corner, he was going for, like, all right, I'm going to reset you standing and then go for the, the high jump up into the dive bomb. And that got beat by the down two. It would just go under. And then in the one situation where he did immediate dive bomb at one, obviously Samij was looking for the immediate down two to beat it, right? So he didn't go back to that. I would have also liked to see the mix-ups just straight off of the EX Ice Breath so he didn't get the chance to down two. True, that, but, that is true. But either way, uh, Samij just playing the, the matchup to perfection and takes a 3-0 over his teammate Tweety. Yeah, and you, you know that just for pride reasons alone, Samij is going to want to make it back up there to rematch Fox oh, yeah. and really try to try to get that uh, that win in the run back because of which they were so close in the mirror. Yeah, you never want to go out like that. Oh, no, never. Absolutely never. But Samij, a great player, moving on. Yeah, that's uh, what we were talking about, interrupting the breath out of the back one. Or, yeah, the back one, whoa. Yeah, it's uh, again. I think it just was a little bit too much muscle memory because again, even the the setups that you were talking about earlier, where he did the full jump into the dive bomb, that works against most characters. But yeah. the Catwoman's down two is just so unique in the way that it makes her hurt box move, which is uh, pretty classic of everything that Catwoman does. Yeah, that uh, it just it didn't work out. I, I, don't, I would love to see him to go for the just the raw low too. After going for the raw overhead, sometimes you just gotta try it, right? Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Uh, yeah, I think that's a, a great tool for Superman in the corner. You see it right there. Yeah, it works on a lot of characters with the back one or the down two able to avoid it. And then, of course, the signature armored back <laughs> three from Catwoman. You're always going to see it whenever the character is played. Because I know if I was a Catwoman player, I'd be doing it all the time myself. Oh, yeah, that's definitely. A, one of the best moves in the game, period. And we're going to see Samij move on to, I believe, loser semis to hopefully get his run back against Sonic Fox, who is in winner's finals. We'll be taking on Dragon shortly, but I think before that, we have another losers match. We should. So that will be Biohazard against Beedon. Now, Beedon, of course, was one of the craziest matches of the entire day. Actually, almost all of these have been incredible, but Beedon, specifically with that 3-0 comeback against Hayate earlier in losers bracket, and then Biohazard, of course, who was very, Super very close girl. against Dragon, but Dragon just closing out every single game. So really, again, I think a big... Part of this is going to be what character Biohazard chooses to play. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm mainly familiar with Biohazard either playing Bane or Harley Quinn. Um, overall, I think Harley Quinn's a stronger character. Um, especially, I think she has less bad matchups as well. Right. But we'll see how he goes. I'm not sure how much matchup experience... Um, Biohazard is going to have against Dr. Fate in general, right? Yeah. I mean, really, there aren't that many Dr. Fates out there. Again, like I said, there's there's Lord Pina. There's Ooh, he went with Deadshot, uh, Icarus. Though. There's just a, a few Fates out there. Not too many. Yeah. So, okay. So, this is another character that we've seen him use. He did use this at, I think it was Toryukin. It was the, the first Canadian major really, really early on, early on in the game's life. We've seen him use him a few other times, but... He really doesn't pull it out too much. I guess the idea here is that when you have a zoning character like Fate, actually, I, we were just talking to yeah. Chris Detarian about this. Yeah. You have a character like Fate who depends on zoning. If he gets out zoned, suddenly he's left with very little. 
Yeah, exactly, right? A, a character whose strength is put so much into one category, when that category gets outmatched by somebody else and they don't have anything to make up for it, it's going to be a struggle. And we're seeing Biohazard put that on display so far with, of course, the very strong zoning of Deadshot. Yeah, now, of course, we, obviously, Beaton has the ability to adapt, but I really don't know what his main goal will be in this matchup. I mean, he has to get in close, but Deadshot himself is some of the best up close normals in the entire game. He can brawl with the best of them. And the thing against Hayate, right, was that he got a lot of time to set up his stuff because of how Robin works. Right. Against Deadshot, you're not going to get that luxury. The wrist shot, the big buck hunter, it's going you know, <laughs> to interrupt you before uh, you get your chance to set up. Shout out to Sejan for the big buck hunter. But right, right now, you know, this is looking like a good spot for Beaton. He's controlling the corner from an interesting range. He never went in. He stood right outside of the normal range of Deadshot and just tried to control him from there. He took back a bit of life, but now, he, again, he's going to have to get back in. Ooh, caught by the big buck hunter once again. The meter burn version, three in a row. When he spit his fourth meter and then blows through the armor with that string. This is looking real good for Biohazard. Bidon clashing to hopefully hold on to any life he has left. Now he's going to have to get back in and no chance. Oh man, just get shot. Bullets on bullets, dead shot. Going to be going up at game one for Biohazard. Again, this is a loser's quarters. Winner of this will go on to face Samij for a chance at top three. Yeah, and honestly, I... I would be really excited to see either of these players play against Super Samij girl. because Bio, I feel like there's a good chance that he would end up picking Bane, and Bane Catwoman matchup is a really fun matchup to watch. And B Don is switching. He doesn't want to get oh, out zoned oh. anymore. Yeah, it looks like he's going to a character that I think a lot of people turn to when the zoning gets a little bit too too overwhelming. With uh, Supergirl, of course, has the air dashes, has the teleports that can uh, punish projectiles that are careless. So we'll see. And I think her trade is actually a really good zoning tool as well. It is. It's really good at zoning and counter zoning just because uh, it, it goes so fast, it recovers so fast. And the biggest thing is that it knocks down. So if you trade it with a projectile that doesn't knock down, you instantly either get to approach or you're going to hit the zoning advantage as soon as they wake up. Oh, he tried to anti air with a jab. Not going to find it. Oh, yeah, oh. right now the, the zoning is looking like it's still effective. Oh. and. Biohazard going in, even though he doesn't really need to. Yeah, I really like him just switching it up just, just for that moment to make sure to keep Bidon on his toes. Not going to just play it up where he'll back up and take the zoning constantly. If he has an opening where he has a significant life lead, he can take a risk to get an even bigger life lead, he'll take it. Oh, I'm not sure if he was just a little bit too flustered and not aware that the interactable was or the, the transition was going to be there or if he didn't want the stage switch. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure he didn't want that because that's going to put him into a pretty disadvantageous position compared to if he had kept him in the corner because uh, Supergirl's corner game is terrifying. It's yeah. so scary. But now he's going to have to get back in and get across this whole stage. Oh, no. That was a really big whip. That move is actually its way worse than it looks on whip. Yeah. Oh, and the back one has such deceptive range. You know, tagging him low. Oh yeah, of course you can break those bullets. I think the only thing that I could think of with the, the transition for beat on is that um, characters on the that stage that we just left can get out of the corner relatively easily, like that shot that he has true. the bomb. But still, I don't know if he wanted that. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. It's looking tough for him right now, though. Oh, no punish on the high shots. Oh, and again, misses two antires, and that's guaranteed chip. Yeah. Oh, I probably just outside of that push block range too. I'm. I'm sure that beat on try. There's no reason you wouldn't try to at least push block in that situation, but of course you can only do it if he's close enough. And right now, I mean, okay, so this has obviously looked very tough for beat on, but so did his first match in losing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the first two games against Hayate, we were ready to write him off, right? We were ready to talk about Hayate taking a 3-0 going on or progressing in the tournament in losers. And then it was a quick turnaround from beat on. We'll see if he can do it here. He is locking in with Supergirl. So let's so give the overall set advantage to Biohazard because even if he loses with that shot at this point, he can go to, to the other two of his characters, the right. characters he's more well known for, and give them a shot if he so chooses. But the dead shot is looking very, uh, very on point so far. Interrupted at the beginning though, beat going to score the first blood and take that meter. Going to spin it on the EX freeze. Definitely a better start off than we've seen in the other two games from Beaton. 
Nice goes for the hard knockdown. Oh, goes for the mix-up, but again, those corner interact bolts are so huge. They're a huge part of the meta, and you just have to be ready for them. There's yeah. no other way to uh, get around them. Yeah, exactly. You have to take it into consideration. A lot of the corner mix-ups for characters just can't be run the same way when those are in play. Ooh, ice Breath. Of course, that is a unsafe on block, but it's very hard to punish because you can charge it up and then cancel it late. You don't see it. Uh, you don't see the non-meter burn version go punished very often. Right, especially because a lot of the time they're just going to be respecting the meter burn part and they're waiting for it to come out. And they're like, oh, it didn't come out, but then by that time it's too late. Exactly. Bio going in, playing pretty aggressively. He he really likes to move forward wow. as he's zoning. Oh, doesn't get the full conversion. Actually, could have got a conversion if he just stopped after the back one, too. Didn't need to do the full thing, but still, quite a bit of a life lead. And I really like him moving forward while he zones to ensure that he doesn't get cornered by Supergirl, right? Well, he, because of him moving forward and not going to the back, he won't ever get cornered even by, like, teleport to the other side and then jump over, right? He'll never be in that situation. Right. Speaking of teleport, it's strange that we haven't seen a single attempt at a meter burn teleport from... Uh, Beat on. I mean, it, honestly, a lot of really good players react to it. Most of them do all the time, but you gotta at least check your opponent, especially when you're in a disadvantageous position, just like this. Yeah, I agree. You have to at least ooh, make them think about that option, try to take up some of their more mental space with it. But of course, both uh, the regular and meter version are punishable, so I understand not going to. And right now, wow, we're seeing some aggressive play by Bio. He's trying to close it out with offense. There's no flash left for beat on but beat on's gonna get a chance super goal go. oh no that is big oh. and that's more than enough so i was gonna say Supergirl gets really good oki off of her combos that is her biggest Dead strength shot, even if her damage isn't huge she gets a free mix up she can do either her her two hit overhead string or she can do an instant air dash try to cross you up yeah empty jump low she has one of the fastest lows that combos in the game but the fact that he dropped that combo meant he lost the Oki, he lost the momentum, and there was just no chance to make it back. But uh, good stuff to Biohazard. Definitely pre-thinking that pick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing his homework, saw he had a, a very dangerous Dr. Fate player to deal with. Chose not to get into that space. Chose a character that didn't have to get into that space where Dr. Fate excelled that and just stood across the screen shooting bullets that led to a victory. Well done. Yeah, so that means he's going to be moving on to fight against Samij in the losers semis yeah that'll be the yes. losers semis and then of course the winner of that's going to end up playing against the loser of winners finals which is going to be fox and dragon in just uh just a minute yeah we're seeing a quick replay here just really complete control from biohazard in that space we saw beat on switch to supergirl in game two and three trying to find an answer for the dead shot again this is the big drop combo we both held a, you oh. i could feel you hold your breath too because when <laughs> supergirl gets that hit she can make it happen <coughs> she doesn't do the most damage but her mix-ups are very strong very hard to get out of unfortunately does that drop lead to the situation not coming about at all yeah i mean she has like four hard knockdown enders but not a not a single one at the end of that so still amazing play by beat on he just yeah he wasn't able to quite adapt he wasn't comfortable in that matchup, so I'm sure I'm sure he'll look for an answer. As clearly, he's a, a player with great adaptation. But like I said, that means he's moving on, and I think that means we are moving on to winners' finals. Oh, and it's going to be Noble Dragon, the defending Evo 2017 Injustice 2 champion, going against Echo Fox, Sonic Fox, many of whom thought he would be the Injustice Black 2 Adam. champion for Evo 2017. What, didn't he tweet something ridiculous? Like, oh, I lost my first Evo. <laughs> oh, I didn't see that, but it wouldn't surprise me. Like, he was like, oh, yeah, this is the first Evo I've ever lost. Like, this kid's ridiculous, yo. Like, come on. Like, how is that even a thing? Sonic Fox speaks for himself. The name rings out. It gives NRS players nightmares, tournament players... You know, they see a picture of the furry hat and they just <laughs> run away. They don't want to play him. But just, here we go. Drag just that particular color of blue is scary you, now. You know? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but we have Dragon. If, the, if there's going to be anybody that's up to the challenge, it will be the EVO champion himself representing Noble Gaming. And so interesting here. So these are two characters that we didn't see from either of these players at EVO. But now, post-EVO, they're trying something new. And Dragon, I mean, he's looking great with Black Adam. This is another matchup where Catwoman can low profile almost, actually more than against Superman. Yeah. Literally every single normal that Black Adam has, except for his sweep. Literally every single one, including all of his overhead normals, she can back three through it. But 
That's not doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad matchup. We've no. seen players like Rewind who specifically choose Black Adam for this matchup. Ooh, but of course the back three. I think he caught him airborne. Hassan Fox trying to ooh, jump back, potentially look for a dive kick setup, and that will be enough damage to take the first life bar away from Young Dragon. Yeah, the big thing here is pretty much what we just saw. The fact that Black Adam doesn't really have good, a good wake-up game. So if Catwoman can get him knocked down, keep the pressure coming, then that that could be just a, a runaway for Catwoman. Oh, and he's working these throw game as well. Oh, but he just wakes up with the down one, and of course, because of the trade, it allows him to get so much damage. You're gonna get a flip out from Dragon. Did not want to eat the damage that was going to be following up. I'm way more than that. One thing that we're seeing. Sonic Fox used a lot more than almost any other Catwoman. What? Did he just down one into background bounce as an anti-air for a dive kick? This kick. I, I don't know what to say, Wonder Chef. I... That was actually ridiculous. OD as hell. Sonic Fox. I mean, that's the type of things you expect from a kid that's like, oh yeah, I finally lost my first Evo, I guess. Down one, interactable background bounce? Oh. On the dive kick from Black Adam? Not even a far dive kick, it was like an instant dive kick, and he was just like, nope, boom, gotcha. I, I have never seen that in my entire life, and I didn't expect that I would ever see that in my entire life. That was... I don't Zero know. fear <laughs> from young master Sonic Fox. Goodness gracious, he's going to be going up 1-0 on Dragon, the defending champion. Oh, there's just, I there I can't even say enough about that, but I would literally talk about that all day. Oh so let's just goodness. move on and see if it happens again. Yeah, Dragon, not deterred so far. You're not going to feel too bad when you still have that 574 damage in your pocket. Oh, Ooh. nice. Good choice of a jump and he was there. Oh. Sonic Fox staying in his face knowing that he doesn't have a real wake up. Just putting the claws up his rear end. Oh, oh no down one that time. No. He might have been looking for it, honestly. Oh, armor back three. Oh, and that could have been a big whip punish on that back two. Of course, every little hit that Black Adam does, infamous for how much damage it can do. Whoa, uses the fan. That's a very rarely used interactable. A lot of people don't even know that it's up there because it's yeah. a little bit hidden behind the lifeguard. Oh, and then the down one right into the hands. And I think hey. that, again, was from a delayed wake-up. Delayed wake-up, we're seeing more and more usage out of it as the game goes on, and it's one of the best defensive tools, especially for characters like Black Adam that don't have real wake-ups. Yeah, absolutely. I think characters like Black Adam need to make as much use of the universal defensive options as possible. Uh, delayed wake-up, push block, etc. Wow, both players spinning their full four bars. <laughs> what? Wow, I, I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. Especially with Sonic Fox. I feel like whenever I see Sonic Fox play, he's very conservative on the meter with the clashes. Yeah, I don't know, just something you almost never see. I think that's literally the highest I've ever seen in a clash. Oh, cancels and blocks the low. Oh, interrupts the hands. Yeah, that is not a true block string whatsoever. My man Sonic, he's showing the knowledge, man. The down one hands. I believe that was a true block string in, in Justice One. It was not exactly, oh, it was, a true but it was one frame, string, right? But yeah, you had to armor through it. That was the only oh, way you could right, do it. So that's right. now you can actually poke through it. Now, of course, Catwoman, as maybe is expected, she can actually back three through it. Of but but uh, yeah, the fact that he was able to just jab through and confirm a combo from it, that is. And not only that, he did it multiple times. That shows a, a ton of knowledge in the matchup, which you need because Black Adam, of course, is one of the most common characters that you see in tournaments. A lot of great Black Adam players. Uh, you, you need to know 100% every single little bit of damage that you can take against him because he's going to get tons of damage against you. And we have a quick 2-0 from Sonic Fox. Uh, interesting, something's going on, but... Oh, okay, so we're going to have a... Oh, oh. Oh. Are they really playing? Is this one for real? No, it looks like Dragon might just be taking Oh, okay. We're just starting that shot. Right. So, of course, Sonic Fox is up 2-0. I'm not sure if Dragon just accidentally locked into Black Adam. Uh, you know what? I think that way might would have been. I was surprised to see we're going into Black Adam again right. in the third game. So I'm expecting that he just accidentally locked into the character. Most likely is going to be picking Aquaman. I doubt we'll see a Poison Ivy when he's down 2-0. He might. You know, Maybe. I don't know, but I'm expecting Aquaman when we get uh, out of this situation here. Of course, Sonic Fox, you know, showing off some of the combos we've seen him play. The We've talked about it a bit, but the Catwoman talk was not just a... Yeah, it's... Uh, oh, okay. It, it clearly, oh, sorry, he's I was just getting some info. so much with Catwoman. Yeah, so... It, it, 
it's not like he's just popped off on Twitter and is just playing Catwoman and going off his fundamentals, right? Obviously, right. he has tremendous fundamentals for any fighting games, but especially the NRS games. So it's definitely not that. We've seen him have the knowledge of the character nuances, the optimal combos that we see almost out of nobody. So definitely a quality Catwoman player already yeah. from Sonic Fox. You know, he's going to be up 2-0 against the EVO champion. Who I'm expecting will be switching characters, and we'll see if he can bring it back 3-0. We've seen a couple of those tonight. Yeah. We saw, um, what was his name again? Bidon? Bidon, thank you. Bidon's Dr. Fate. Bring it back three straight against Hayate's Robin. We've seen the games go down to game five a couple of times. I wouldn't be surprised if we got it again. Oh. Going, you know, when it's pretty much the two best players in the world. Right. I think, if anything, it's the fact that I think both of them decided, in, or at least in this matchup, they decided that, you know, you know what, these are new characters. They're both really good. We'll just try them. And it was two close matches. But I think if any reason that it just doesn't go to game five, it'll be because that happened and ended up as a 2-0 before... Dragon chose a more serious character. And also, let me just mention that these are the two players that not only are considered two maybe the best, but they are literally tied for first place in IPS points. So this this tournament today, wow. of course, does award yeah. Injustice Pro Series points. So one of them will move up into that first place spot as opposed to actually just, they're literally sitting at a tie for first yeah. place. Yes. I mean, how much more perfect does that get, right? Yeah, exactly. And again, if you're looking in the Europe region, those online uh, tournaments are coming up soon. Just go to smash.gg on the front page. will be the Injustice 2 Pro Series online uh, category. Just click that and make sure to sign up for your proper region. You can get it in there. We mentioned it awards IPS points. These two guys, these two guys in Winners Finals are tied for first place. And that tie will be broken by the online tournament here that we are deciding in top eight. Yeah, which of course is a huge deal because for, for them, they're almost guaranteed to be in the finals. Which uh, so so I think I can't remember who exactly tweeted, but somebody said, "Oh, if you if you lose to them this week, you're getting gate gate kept." <laughs> but mm. regardless, seating is huge. You want that first place seating is then. You do not want to have a tougher path than you need to. You want to let all the the more tough opponents kind of you know weed themselves out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they, I mean, of course, on top of that, these two have a really big competitive history. They have a very long competitive history. They have played against each other since MKX in so many different tournaments. They were the the grand finals of many, many tournaments. And for a while, Sonic Fox was really Dragon's demon. But Dragon's shown that he can do it now. Yeah, exactly. We saw, like, towards the end of MKX, we saw Dragon starting to rise up in the ranks, taking a couple of first places. I believe uh, even at, like, right after the Echo Fox came out, right? After the big right. signings of Sonic Fox, of Scar, of all these uh, top uh, level players. We saw a final round was one of the first uh, tournaments for an NRS game. I can't remember, it was MKX, I believe. Um, in f at final round? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah because yeah, 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 that's was in March and then it right, just right. came and out of yes. May. It was CEO so, and so yeah, it was one of the, the last real big MKX tournaments and we saw a Dragon take it uh, in first place. I think Sonic Fox either got second or third. So we, we've seen Dragon able to overcome both of the, the strong Echo Fox boys before. But what you guys are going to check out is a quick break here on the Twitch.tv slash NetherRealm stream. We'll be right back with some top four action. Please do not go anywhere.
and we're back with the final matches of the Injustice 2 Pro Series online tournament for the North American East region presented by PS4. It's been a ridiculous night of matches, but we only got two left. So apparently the very last match of that set was real. And that's... Our bad. Yeah, that is... Uh, <laughs> I, I saw it and it very much looked like a button check to me. I'm going to stick with that. Uh, but I don't know what happened. I guess it was a very one-sided matchup for Sonic Fox. Yeah, it, but what we thought it was like uh, some type of technical difficulty was just turned out to be Sonic Fox making every correct read in a <laughs> row and just shutting down anything Dragon tried to do again. The Black Adam, biggest weakness, and no real wake-up. And it seemed like Sonic Fox just completely exploited that in Game 3 and ended up taking it and will take his spot in Grand Finals winner's side here in the Injustice 2 Top 8. And uh, we're going to have Dragon going down to uh, the bottom of the bracket, the lower bracket, so to speak, to be taking on, I believe, the winner of Biohazard and uh, Samij. Yeah. Right. So. so that's going to be a very good match. Again, like I was saying earlier, I think we might see Bane against Catwoman. That is just a brawl of a matchup. Two characters there. I mean, we, we've seen Biohazard obviously playing a great zoning game earlier today when he chose Deadshot against Beatdown, but... Uh, if he chooses Bane in this matchup, this is going to be, like I said, just a brawl. No projectiles, just I, going all in. Yeah, and I really love, like, the type of gameplay style of NR, like, the especially Injustice, the type of gameplay style yeah, it builds man. for the players, right? Like, Biohazard, you think of him as a Bane player, right? Obviously, he wants Bane. to get in there, do his grappling thing, mix you up, stay in that close quarters combat Fighters range. But then we saw him pull out City. the dead shot, and it was as comfortable at the long range uh, as he was at the close range. And I think that's super important in being successful in NR escapes, is playing at every single range. So, yeah, I mean, great Again. stuff uh, early on from Mr. Biohazard, but we're going to see the Bane as you predicted. So this is just, it's a ridiculous matchup, and I feel like it should be just a lot of quick games. Now, oh, it was airborne, avoids the armor on the command grab. And I wonder if that was specifically a read to beat the reversal command grab in that situation. It could have been. The airborne properties seem like a great answer if he finds himself in that situation once more. Now, of course, just like all other matchups, Catwoman's hitboxes are a big deal. So is your meter burn back three, as we just saw. <laughs> But uh, back three, it goes underneath a lot of tools that Bane has. Now, even the ones that, that they generally would win because they're armored in the situation, it'll whiff. And oh. wow, that was a weird whiff I, for almost no reason at all, it seemed like. Nice. Yes, Cat Dash. Take him to the corner. This is good damage for some Meej. So the jump back two to check him. Oh, blows through the armor on the command grab. Takes a little bit too long to start up, and we're going to get a clash out of the side of Biohazard. And, of course, the clash is going to put him into a debuff. Oh, they tied. They're using a lot of resources. Oh, the down two we talked about it earlier. Full trade as well. He's going to spend it for a little bit of extra damage. Oh, wakes up with the command throw. Going to side switch on him, get the cutter going. Oh, meter burn tombstone. And now he's really going to have to win almost the entire life bar with, oh, oh that actually could have been the kill, but a drop. Ooh, and then again, and the string blowing through the armor attempt at the command grab from Biohazard. Samij taking the first game in dominant fashion. And he's been making, or Biohazard has been making really good reads with the armor, but he's going for the command grab a lot, which is, of course, one of the safer Dang. options because you really need to preemptively jump and punish it. Now, I think if he decides to really commit a little bit more on his reads and go for a little something maybe a little bit faster, like the, the, the uppercut, the venom uppercut, or the shoulder, it might win out in a lot of those situations because really it's just the fact that the command grab's so slow and it's losing to the multiple hits normally. Begin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to go into game two. Samedji, or excuse me, Samij, taking the first game. Ooh. Oh, good read on the command grab. That is one of the scariest tick throws. Oh, and that's not the first time we've seen that trade. No, and he's going to take the trade every time if he can get the full combo. Wow. Samij interrupted with the uppercut. So, oh, the interactable tears the pipe out of the spaceship. I actually didn't even know that that was an interactable. I can't no. lie. And he used it in a very strange way that I, I don't think, uh, yeah, that was weird. Yeah, so oh. definitely wasn't looking for that at all. Wow, that actually was really lucky Ooh. that it switched sides with the meter burn part of it. The, the uppercut went underneath her and hit her kind of like, uh, yeah, just like as a cross up. And then of course the meter burn auto-corrected, gave Bane the corner positioning, but now of course not quite so much. 
Oh, you can see, of course. We always have to talk about that range that players play against Catwoman at, respecting her long distance options. Meter burn, cat dash, knocks him down. Ooh, but yeah, you can't jump back against Bane. One of his best wake up tools is that uppercut. Oh, and that should be a big whiff on That should be more than enough for Meter Lestat. Now, that was a really smart because it was, it was just a minor thing, but the fact that instead of going for normals to kill, he went right into the special, that means that he wanted that little bit of extra meter, which, of course, every little bit counts. Oh, yeah, and catches the jump. Meter burns it. Oh, but he just jumps the command throw. Meter burn cat dash again. It's giving some good damage. Whoops him down in the corner. Oh, try to escape with the armor on the command grab. Okay, chase down from Samich. Oh, nice. He confirmed that, that whiff, and it was a beautiful whiff oh. punish. Two in a row, and now he might use the rest of his venom. Is he going to use it? Yes, he is, and he needed it. Wow, that might have actually helped him stay alive, oh. but didn't give him enough life back. Or not enough, sorry, enough life back, but didn't give him enough defense to uh, not get killed by the jump back whip, which is, of course, in its own way, a, a zoning tool. It's almost like jumping back and throwing down a projectile. It's, I think it's one of the best zoning <laughs> tools, honestly. Like, the amount of space that controls, and it's just so hard to deal Dang. with. We saw in the mirror earlier, I think it was in the first match we between uh, Sonic Fox and Samij. We saw Samij get a quick dash under on the jump, too. That was, like, the, the best answer we've seen all night, and no one has been able to replicate it. It's a very hard uh, neutral tool to deal with in general. Yeah, especially when your character like Bane, who he, he is so large that a lot of times if he tries to say dash underneath, yeah. he's gonna get clipped in the head. Exactly. He's gonna pull out one of his venom tubes. Oh yeah. Knock down setup. Ooh. Catches Bane trying to get frisky on wake up. Knock him down with the whip once more. Oh, just wakes up with a command throw. Side switch with the cutter. Wow. Waking up with a trait. Some good damage, and he's gonna, yeah. Ooh, the unblockable barrels end up exploding. There was really no situation where he could have been able to get out of that. Oh, oh. that's a full combo. This is definitely one of the most heavily interactable influence levels. Yes. There are so many different combos, especially the character like Catwoman can get off of all these interactables. In fact, we might see another one right here. Exactly. Ooh, and that is unblockable. You cannot avoid it. Oh, fortunate situation for Biohazard. This is a tremendous lead. Over 100% life lead for Samij. And a little bit of life back, but still, like you said, just such a such a lead. Ooh, oh, Ooh. chasing down. Oh, <laughs> uppercut. Ah, just wakes up with the invincible Catwoman uppercut. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, so oh. Good. Well, that's a start, but... Oh, the delayed yeah. wake up, so good. Samij using all the tools in his arsenal to take it 3-0 over Biohazard and secure himself a guaranteed top three placing. But he's going to have to get past Dragon if he wants that shot at his run back with Sonic Fox. Yeah, wow. The, the usage of interactables that game was ridiculous. I mean, he almost didn't even really open Biohazard up it, until all of a sudden it was just interactable, interactable interactable and there were even more on that stage that he could have used but he knew exactly the situations to use each one of those and exactly the conversion to get off of them and uh, I mean it works that's honestly one of the biggest tools that Catwoman has is that her mobility along with her ability to, to control where you're standing then she uses the unblockable interactables full combos okey etc and that's exactly what happens yeah I don't know what the design philosophy was because like Joker's playground doesn't have any transitions they put <laughs> just put a bunch of interactables on that one stage but either way Samij Made great use of all at his uh, beck and call. Maybe it's because Joker likes his toys. That is definitely true. And uh, like most of Joker's toys, there are a lot of bombs Man, involved. Man, yeah. Again, we see the uh, unblockable bomb set up in the corner right there. Biohazard tried to react. He tried to get the back dash out of there. But again, Bane, not having a very far moving back dash, wasn't quite able to get out of the range of the hitbox of the explosion. And Samij doing a great job chasing down those errant rushes with the cat dash. Waking up with the trait. No, I, I am very interested to know why Bio decided not to try any other characters. I mean, he was he was relatively close, but of course we've seen so many great characters out of Biohazard. Especially we've seen, I mean, we've seen three today alone. But you know, he he decided to stick with his guns, I guess, against Samij. Went down 3-0. Uh, but hey, you, you got to play your character, right? You've got to play your main character. You got to try them. You can't regret it.
Yeah, even in certain situations where you may think this matchup for this character is a little bit better, at the end of the day, most likely your best shot is going to be the character you put the most time into. Right. And for Biohazard, that's Bane. That's the character that people identify him the most with. And of course, that's probably the character that he feels the most comfortable on. I think he's very recognized with Harley as well. But Bane was the character that put him on the map. It's the character that he chose to stick with against Samij. But that Catwoman and Samij just gelling too well together. He takes a 3-0, and he will be in Losers Finals against Dragon. Now, Dragon, we we literally just saw him play this matchup. So Begin. it didn't work out too well for him against Sonic Fox. And now uh, it's another time that Samij is really going to have to, uh, against his own wishes, kind of measure himself up to Sonic Fox. Yeah. Because now he's going to have to play, like I said, the exact same matchup against the exact same player and see if he can do the same thing. Yeah, we'll see if Dragon can find some answers. Oh my goodness, that low whip. Such a dangerous range. Good block in the back too. It was an overhead. Oh, and you mentioned those car wheel kicks earlier. Overhead that's close on block. It ends up opening him up there. And the, uh, the upwards cartwheel also, this one right here, is also plus on block, wow. plus it launches on hit. So that really allows a lot of guaranteed pressure in the oh corner. Oh my goodness, especially against Black Adam. Here that it doesn't have an invincible wake up. Wow, went right into the meter burn interactable, the laser. Oh, 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 oh. Just needed the chip. Very nice choice. And yeah, that this laser, speaking of great interactables, which we've already seen a good usage in this level, and of course the last game, this laser on the left side is an incredibly good interactable. It is so hard to punish. You can use it as many times as you want. Very low cooldown. And uh, it can actually give Catwoman the ability to potentially try to zone this matchup. Wow, we've seen that back to back now. The back three from Catwoman sailing under the dive kick. What I'm more amazed at is that it sailed under the nerf bat over at NRS. <laughs> Ooh. Normalization bat. It's uh, no, oh, that's game. right, that's it's right. Normalization, normalization bat. Excuse me. Ooh, car wheel overhead again. Oh. Dragon can't find a way out. Yeah, I was going to say, he's going to have to look to the push block, but it doesn't matter. Samij with the options to stay in his face. Going to take the first game with ease. Yeah, very, very one-sided. And really good usage of the, the one four two, 2 the overhead cartwheel. Uh, even when he finally blocked it, after getting hit by like two or three in a row, he finally blocked it, and he's like, oh, wait, Cat it's one. still plus. Now what do I do? Yeah, <laughs> right? That was the worst situation. I think that's when he realized that. I'm like, I'm going to have to try to push block, get this little space back, but... Instant uh, forward uh, moving mid from Catwoman, able to uh, come up with a quick answer to that push block. And Dragon, no more games, has switched to the Aquaman. Yeah, which is something that I'm surprised, again, that he didn't do against Sonic Fox Begin. at all. This is a very heavily contested matchup. So, for uh, honestly, the, the majority, I think, of Catwoman players really do not like the Aquaman matchup. But, okay. of course, Theo, who was known for playing Aquaman in Justice 1, says that this matchup is very much in Catwoman's favor. It's a, a very different matchup than you think. Now, both of these characters really have great normals, and they can both zone each other out. But overall, when they're fishing for these neutral hits, Aquaman is the one who's going to come out on top in damage. Okay. Yeah, of course. That back one, two, three, plus two for this patch. For now. He can enjoy it while it lasts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what. That's really what I'm surprised Dragon not playing Aquaman. That, that's, that surprises me more. Not that he wants to try Black Adam or anything like that. It's that you got a week left, my man, with that, that plus back one, two, three and all that. Come on. Yeah, get, get as much time as you can. You're, you're going to miss it when it's gone. Yeah, the ground bounce on From the Deep. Get your, get your ground bounces in, my man. Get some combos going. Yeah, you're never going to be able to feel that combo again. So just, just. But right now, it's, it's working really well. This is, of course, a matchup for, of just so much patience for both characters. Yeah. If one character cracks, makes a jump that really shouldn't have been made. Oh. Or the armor back three. You have to figure with four bars on deck, Samiz is going to be looking for that option eventually. Yeah. Nice. The classic Aquaman BNB. That's the one Aquaman BNB that'll never change. Oh, yeah, definitely not. Oh, he's got to get away from the ball. Ooh, nice punish on the cat dash. Good, good choice for an optimal conversion, knowing that he didn't have the meter to get the full technical strike conversion. Yeah. Oh, nice oh. punish. That is not within a safe range. You have to be completely out of range of cat dash to be able to safely use technical strike. Interesting. You can see why this is a very contested matchup. Yeah, but it's weird because both Ooh. of these characters stop each other's tools. So they really yeah. just both shut each other down, and it becomes this super patient game. 
Oh, the Ooh. armor back three catches whatever he was trying to do on wake up. Put him on a pixel of health just enough to get the clash. Couldn't one without clashing. Well, spent on a ridiculous amount of meter to try to keep him at that clash life. And it's just for that reason alone. Wow, so the, the switch not working out quite as well for Dragon as it could have. Samij already up 2-0. So this is looking like maybe this is a character that uh, Dragon needs Cat to woman. work on. I don't think he actually ran into Cat any woman. Catwoman players at EVO. Wow. Yeah, you might be right. His top eight, of course, at least top eight, he didn't seem to have been able to uh, go against any of the Catwomans, much to his... Uh, Pleasure, apparently, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, and not to his dismay, because he is not looking too well against these Catwomans. Begin. Well, of course, we're still early into the game. Even though the first Evo's passed, it's only been a few months since the game came out. Oh, wow, Dragon oh, actually picked what? Catwoman himself. Yeah, I, I was really confused for a second, honestly, and I was like, wait a minute, is this, uh, yeah, I like forgot who was playing, but um, Dragon, I feel like this is a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, just kind of a, a giving up from Dragon. A fold, a fold. Hey, a fold, that's a great way to put it. It could be. We'll see, of course, Dragon. Oh, I saw him in the chat during break. He said, all you that are saying I'm free, you can hold my 30K and my trophy. <laughs> so at the end of the day, I'm not sure if he's too concerned, but we'll see if his Catwoman can uh, live up to uh, Sonic Foxes and take some ease down in the mirror. You know, it's, it's not looking bad right now. He's, I mean, this is gonna give him the lead. Let's see if he decides to transition. Nope, just taking the lock around the corner. Oh, oh, multiple hits of armor on the meter burn interactable. So smart by Samij. Samij out of today has had definitely the best interactable usage. Yeah, I can agree with that. But, you know, Dra Dragon's really not looking bad. Again, oh, no. going into this mirror, not, uh, I mean, he's keeping it even. He's Ooh. keeping it more even than all of his other matches with his mains were. Oh, but it's getting a lot less even as we keep going. Samij, oh, whips it, but no landing punish by Dragon. We'll take the whip finish on that turn down one whip that was his punisher which was it was enough to kill it's just a very strange punisher you don't usually see oh yeah to me slowly oh. pushing his life that down two do you see how far of a range that has it hits when it just doesn't even look like it should yeah to me the cowboy player himself wasn't even ready for it oh my <laughs> goodness the down twos something you have to keep so in mind when playing against this character tamed. even when you are playing her yourself but I, oh, what was that? Why did they both, they both dodged? What were they even trying to dodge? <laughs> Why did they both just come out of Clash dodging at the exact same moment? I don't understand. That was like the best taunt ever. It was like one of those super respect oh, things. Oh, Harvard back three. Oh, that's oh definitely going to be enough. I, I don't know what their idea was. They didn't use a single dodge, cat dodge the entire set. I haven't seen them use almost the entire day, except for maybe against Tweety. But all of a sudden, it was just like both at the same time. They're just both like meow. Like, <laughs> what, what was that? I don't I don't even understand. They were trying to dodge the wrist shot that Catwoman has. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the secret buff. Um, well, yeah, that was very interesting. We do see Samij take it 3-0, I believe, over Dragon. Um, ending it with, of course, the armored back three, absorbing normal specials, normalizations, <laughs> absorbing whatever it can go through. And we're going to see Samij get his run back against Sonic Fox here in Grand Finals with what will probably be another Catwoman mirror match. We are seeing a lot of that tonight <laughs> for some reason. I, again, I'm really surprised that we even saw Dragon choose Catwoman, but his Catwoman didn't look bad. No, Definitely no, no. had some practice with the character. Uh, kept it relatively competitive, kept it close in the very final game. And uh, yeah, honestly, did better than some of his other characters did, which was interesting. Yeah. I guess a lot of these, you know, Especially with the patch coming up, I understand why a lot of these top players are trying other characters. Because if you put all of your eggs in one basket, that basket gets nerfed, and now suddenly there's eggs all over the floor. And you, <laughs> that's not what you want. You're going to slip, you're going to fall, it's going to be bad. That's just a, a waste great, of eggs. Yeah, that was a great analogy. And I think um, that's kind of the, even though NRS has been slow with patching this game, right? They haven't been quick to jumping on any of the balance changes or anything like that. We're finally getting our first like significant balance change patch. Um, I still think it's just kind of the nature of the beast when it comes to NRS games, right? right. It's uh, very volatile. The, the meta at the, the top, uh, at the top level is very volatile, whether it be because players constantly are developing new tech with certain characters that they want to show off or that they think is good against popular matchups, popular top tier at the time, whether it be because of the patches from NRS. It's just the type of game that I think uh, NetherRealm has produced at this point, right? MKX, Injustice, I feel like these games require the top players to play a handful of characters. I think it's a successful strategy.
Right. I mean, of course, we have seen some characters, some players that are character loyalists doing really well. One of them being, of course, Biohazard yes. or, or Samij. Samij yes. is a, a perfect example. A player who chooses just one character, just shows one character more Combat X. But overall, yeah, the top of the top, they really need to know a lot of characters. And they know exactly when to choose the characters they want. And, and we've seen that now. Yeah, I want to say playing a lot of characters. Well, playing a character will teach you more about the character than anything else, right? Oh, absolutely. So that, that's always something to keep in mind when you're a top player, when you want to ooh, play these matchups at the top level. But that is the most important lesson at the top level of Catwoman Mirrors right there is the armored back three. You got to armor back three, but you can't be the first one armored no. back three. You got you to gotta be the second. That's, uh, <laughs> you got you to gotta be perfectly on time with them. My man armored back three her into a stage transition and then did a back three again as soon as they <laughs> came out of the transition. I love it. But again, it's looking pretty even. We just saw this matchup on this level. All right, and this should be enough to, oh, maybe not close it out. Maybe it was a little bit less than I thought. Yeah, and Sonic Fox did defeat Samij. Ooh, in the first round of winners in this very matchup. Samij is going to be coming from loser side. He's going to have to beat Sunner Fox a full two sets if he wants that first place in that lion's share of the IPS points. Yeah, and he is one of the players who definitely needs it. Now, he is seated relatively well, but uh, with, with how many tournaments are coming up in the IPS in general yeah. within the next few months or even just month? Whoa, wait, was that... Back did he backdash? I, I actually, it looked like they switched sides. So I, I feel like maybe the backdash invincibility actually got through the cat dash. That's I've exactly what I think it was, honestly. Well, I mean, again, Catwoman has one of the best backdashes in the entire game. Oh, the armored back three. Gotta expect it. You, you have to expect it. Well, I mean, I expected it to get nerfed, but I mean. <laughs> it, no. uh, it low profiled the, uh, the normalization. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, actually, it did get a little bit it of did, a change, did, but overall, still going to be a great oh, one. Down two, and we've seen Catwoman's be able to trade off that all day. Sonic Fox needs to keep this Oki going. Oh, no, that is not what he needs to do. <laughs> Dropping that combo is definitely a huge... Yeah, the armored back three again, we see it. A tool that he's threatening with. Oh, and then the meter burn cat dash into finding the opening. Sonic Fox has a full trade available. Wow, I can't believe he landed on the original side. Oh, the punish. Oh, and he can make this comeback. Oh, no, isn't able to get a whiff punish, but neither was some Oh, he, that was just about to break Sonic Fox's awareness on the clash setups. That's why he did a normal into throw previously. He tried to sneak the whip in there, but Samij was ready. Oh, the meter burn boxing bag. Wow. Just like we were saying earlier, Samij with the extremely good interactable usage. Knew exactly that that was, that was pretty much a guarantee in that situation. It was, it was perfect. We've seen him use almost every single interactable on every single one of these levels that he's playing. And he's playing with, with Catwoman too, a character that you need, I think, a little bit more discipline on the spacing of using the interactables. It's not like Superman where he's just going to pick up the punching bag and throw it at you, you know what I mean? She, you know, so it was a great usage so far throughout the night. Samij's going to take the first game over Sonic Fox. But it's going to be a long road, of course. Samij is in losers. He's got to win a three out of five set and then another three out of five set. Yes. No easy feat against what many consider is the number one NRS. Oh player. my goodness. With the armor back three, Samij is finding the rhythm of when to use it. <laughs> Again, this this sort of full screen dodge. I don't understand what this is. It's just like they're they're like respecting each other. They're like, all right, yeah. It, like, it doesn't give you a chance to build any of the tree, right? It only does it when you dodge a projectile. Right. 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 Okay. So yeah, I don't know why they're doing. Peter Burn Cat Dash again. Oh yes, that was the setup. He went through it with the armor, but Sonic Fox's setup it ended up being right in front of him anyway for the punish. Yeah, of course, one of the best things about those interactables is not only the fact that they're unblockable, but the fact that it takes the user out of the corner. So even though Samij was able to, which was it was actually a beautiful escape. It was yeah. one of the only times we've seen somebody really escape a setup like that. He still got it. Oh, <laughs> right back at him. Into the corner we go. Will Sonic Fox open up with that? We saw Samij look for it. That's why he did the jump back too. I would expect all of these games to be very close. We're yeah. seeing them all go down to the wire. Jump I wouldn't two. be surprised if that happened literally every time. Yeah, easy confirm to the meter burn cat dash. Oh, I'm um, <laughs> I trying to bait something? I don't know. Maybe a, a wake up right there would have been potentially punished. Cat dash. Oh. Um, that's actually the unbreakable. Yeah, I was so going to say. 
I'm flashing a combo on the side of Sonic's box. Just going for a little bit of chip, but right now, oh, Simiji's Sim reactions with clashing have been stolen. great. Yeah. Uh, like literally last hit, last hit of his life has been clashed two games in a row now. Gives him a fighting chance, no meter on the side of either player. Oh, that's a whip punish, no full conversion. Oh, and again, no full conversion. Neither one uh, committing to that, which is the, usually the safe option. The whip is, of course, only minus one on block, so it's a great check. But right now, Samij really needs the damage. And neither of these players are willing to go in on the other, but no. Samij has to. He has to be the one. Plenty of time on the clock, Samij. <laughs> really thinking about his approach at this point. Oh, oh! Sonic Fox, I don't know why he closed that distance on himself. Oh, but the wake up and a punish. He missed. Okay, so that, that was a push block because meter burn trade is plus, and we're seeing more plus frames. Oh, no, triple black dash. Oh, tried to escape. That was actually a really good delayed wake up, but Sonic Fox was ready for it, and yeah, that was that was a uh, very smart from both players just through all, all the end of that. I mean, we haven't really seen too much meter burn trade from Catwoman, but it's plus I believe six on block, so it guaranteed you some pressure, and. Samij wanted to use that to continue opening up Sonic Fox, make the comeback. He almost did, but Sonic Fox is ready for that. Again, it's just like the first push block that we've seen almost the entirety of the set. He knew yeah. exactly when to use it, exactly when he needed to. Pretty smart. Yeah, super impressed with Sonic Fox's play. Begin. Of course, we are going to continue with the Catwoman Mirror. We have 1-1 in this grand finals. <laughs> they're definitely just taunting yeah, each other. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. They're, uh, there's no tactical advantage. Oh. There. Yeah, but the title of advantage this time is gained by Sonic Fox. Marking that first blood and that first meter with a down two. Sick combo. Oh. And that is a very nasty cross-up, not cross-up setup. Because most yeah. of the time, that jump one will hit in the front Ooh. and then she lands behind you. Oh, he's going to spin the trade. Oh, stays there. Doesn't take the damage either. Great stuff from Sonic Fox. And now on top of that, Sonic Fox gets to keep the corner advantage and there's no more interactable in that corner. Yeah, I wanted to uh, quickly touch on the last game. The the low whip from Sonic Fox was used at a tremendous distance. Up close, we haven't seen it used like that all set, and it caught Samish by surprise. Ooh, again, we've seen that so much, though. Jump two right into the meter burn CAD dash confirm. Ooh, wow, nice. Good choice by Sonic Fox to start blocking there, or he would have definitely been caught in that trap. And of course, that trap is a full combo. Oh, we tried for the crazy setup right there. Seemed like the rollback avoided it. Oh, Sonic Fox looking dominant here in game three. Over 100% life lead. Gonna force Samij to use his clash. Gonna get about 50% health back, but still at over 100% deficit. Again, you see Sonic Fox coming out of the clash with the taunt yeah. dodge. But uh, no, no mutual respect there from Sami. Sami just like, wait, hold on a minute. I gotta, I gotta bring this back. Whoa, what a back to whip. back. Sonic Fox looking to party a little bit too hard. And Sami definitely Whoa. walked back expecting that he was gonna do it again right yeah. there. But uh, Fox not, not uh, committing to the gimmick. Sami interrupting whatever Sonic Fox was gonna try to move himself out of the corner with there. <laughs> both players going with the same option. After the health bar ender. That perfectly timed back two from both players. And honestly, this is not a terrible spot for Samij. Oh, until 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 it is. <laughs> I guess. Oh, and that's a punish. Out. Samij definitely has a chance here. Meter deficit. Sonic Fox is four bars. That could mean four. Meter burn back threes. Gotta be careful. Oh yeah, or or just a, a lot of health back. Actually, it could not be. Sonic Fox could choose it. Super is a pretty good ender. Oh, he used three, okay. So keeping the one bar for the conversion, that means that any hit should potentially kill Samij. Yeah. But Samij, as soon as Samij puts one bar, the same thing could be said for him. Oh, interrupting him with the down one. And this has gone from 150% life lead to almost even, to potentially one combo away from either oh, person winning. Oh, just the low again, and then just oh. the throw. Sonic Fox is going to go up 2-1 here in Grand Finals. And that is, that is really tough for your momentum. When you almost make a comeback, you work so hard to bring that back, and then you just lose to two straight hits, and you're just like, oh, it's so hard to keep that going.
And yeah. we'll, we'll have to see if Samij can keep that energy up and keep the momentum going from when he was actually making the comeback. And Stone Fox's mind games in those situations are so impressive. In the last game, he ended it with a, a very close whip low, which we don't see that move used up close like that. It's usually far. It's one of our best long-range tools. And in here, we see him threaten with it again, get it from a little longer range, and then <laughs> when Samij just got caught blocking and thinking about it, dash up throw. Great stuff from Sonic Fox. So that means that Sonic Fox is now on tournament point, potentially double eliminating Samij in the Catwoman mirror. But Samij can still fight back, still in losers, gonna have to make the reset. But if he just plays like he was playing while he was making the reset last game, it's totally possible. Oh, catches the jump out. Yeah, of course Samij has already put himself on the board for the first game. Oh, armor back three. Caught Sonic Fox, I think, moving forward at the last second. Probably wanted to sit. Try to switch to the back block, but couldn't get it in time. Oh my goodness, the back threes are flying. Yeah, this is the, this is the time to bring them out. If you ever want to fluster your opponent, hit him with Catwoman back three. Yes, this is the fire cell has been unleashed. The back threes must go. Oh, pretty good deal on ES Cat Dash as well. Wake up, no punish though. Oh, oh, even it up really quick. Yeah, Samij, this is his best game so far besides that W. And Sonic Fox tied it up real quick. Nice awareness from Sonic Fox. Knowing that wasn't unblockable or anything like that, just staying solid. Wow, and look at this walk back. It's like it's just back was held down. Maybe he took a drink of water or something. He was like, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Oh, the armored back three going through the low whip. Nice, just block right there, very patient. And Samij, this game is playing so much more patient, although I say that as he makes an unsafe jump and gives Sonic Fox the corner advantage. Nice roll. Oh, he held it and gets the combo. Whip, put him out a long distance, gets the back roll, voice the jump in set up, tries for an armor back three on his own. Samij, a pixel of health away and the crazy setup, going to the other side, the EX cat dash to get through and cross him up. Wow, and really, I mean, you've been talking about the tool a lot over the last few sets, but really that came down to who made the right reads on the back threes, and it was entirely Samij. I mean, yeah. Fox threw out like three separate blocked meter burn back threes, and Samij hit like three meter burn back threes in a row. Each one of those is huge damage. It's Oki, it's uh, screen carry, it's everything. So. Really? I, I think we might see Samij use that more. I think Why that, not? yeah, and I think that was the experience with the character coming into play. He did it enough to frustrate Sonic Fox to where he knew when Sonic Fox would try to do it back to <laughs> him, you know what I mean? And he just blocked it every time. So good stuff to Samij tying it up in this first set. Of course, even if he gets another W, he will have to go through Sonic Fox three more times. He wants to call himself first place. Oh, nice, good punish. He actually walked underneath so he could get the full punish, but he was a little bit too far out of the corner. Still, though, getting another opening and almost Ugh. a flawless so far on this first life bar. Oh, yeah, he built the trade just in time to use it at the end of that combo. <laughs> oh. Tried to swing the line at him. I don't think that's what he thought that that interactable was going to do. <laughs> One of the first kind of weird, bad interactable uses we've seen from Samij, but... Yeah, we're cat dash right there. Oh, the film. He, he made up for it. He, he had one weird interactable usage, and then in, he uses the second one to guarantee close out that life bar with the armor. Very smart. Oh, Sonic Fox interrupting that. Drops the combo. That would have been huge damage. And have a chance at the corner. Nice. Yeah, Samij has been so on point with the interactable usage. Sonic Fox learning and just looking for it there. Now Sonic Fox playing a little bit of the, the runaway game. Oh, no. This is good. Oh, he, no, not quite enough to kill. All right, uh, an understandable risk by Samij. He just went for it. It would have been a full combo on hit, but you know, one way or another, you, you try something. Yeah, we saw such a, do a dominant start from Sonic Fox in the last game. This one was uh, Samij taking a hefty life lead, but it ends up very even going into the second health bar for both players. And again, this is technically match point for Sonic Fox, but right now he's going to get the momentum back two in a row blocked. Good defense from Sonic Fox. Stay impatient now. Oh, good full conversion. Fox not breaking. Interesting choice. He might not get another chance. All right, he will get another chance. But meter is even, so this life lead will probably stay for Samij. Yeah, Samij untouched with the second life bar. Only 197 health left on the side of Sonic Fox. Oh, my goodness. 
and what other move seals the reset? But of course, the Catwoman back three. 3-2 three, for Samij here, and we are going to a great grand finals. It will be Sonic Fox versus Samij. I believe we're going to still see the mirror, honestly. Yeah. Even I, if we go another five games. I think it'll be all the way through. All the way through, we're going to see a lot more Catwoman, a lot more back threes. Fighters approaching <laughs> like I said, the, uh, the fire sale must they, they go. Must go. <laughs> they must go. They must go. They can't stay here anymore. Prices the, and hitboxes are low. <laughs> God. The hip box, the hurt box is so low. Yeah, it's go. so annoying. Oh, from long distance, the whip. And the catcher in the ankles, wow. It seemed like that threw her out of maybe an airborne state. That was super weird. Yeah, I, well, it was, it was a stance after the block string, so I guess Sonic Fox wants to try to jump. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, almost the whip punch. Good choice to stop that string midway through and not get whip punished. Yeah, I thought he was going to get whip punished. Back to back, back threes, <laughs> and then a back dash to make the other back three whiff. But that was actually a really Beautiful whiff punish. That was the absolute maximum damage whiff punish. And knowing exactly which normal actually has the hitbox to whiff punish the low hurtbox, that uh, was very smart by Sonic Fox. Um, oh. Ooh, good push block. Get yourself some space back. Ooh. If that would have caught the cat dash, I would have lost my mind. The interactable? That would have been nuts. Ooh. Oh! Sonic Fox getting tagged by once again the meter burn back three. You know, Scar came down here to Wednesday Night Fights. I don't know how much of well, Injustice 1 Scar played. Do you remember him from those days? Yeah, he played He played some of it. He was, Not as much as he plays more. Right? So I was like, I don't know if you know about this Scar, but we have this guy named Crazy down here. He plays Catwoman, and he likes to back three. <laughs> and uh, Crazy did not let me down. He did it about 10 in the match that I said to check out. So we're seeing plenty come out flying hot and fast from Sonic Fox and Samij. Of course, this is your reset. Samij won the first set. 3 2. Put that interactable down. The, the weird thing was that didn't even absorb the interactable. It just caught it. Yeah, I guess yeah. it didn't even have a, a damaging hitbox at that point. Oh, and you get some good pressure. But there's a really good interactable on that corner. Nice. Samij knows that too. Catching the jump out. And that's going to even it up. Which side? Good block. Again, he's so ready to push block the meter burn part of that. Yeah, I, I like that option. This how you ask me? Quick break for Samij. Gonna give him the life lead by just a Samij. Again, as usual, coming down to the wire. But, of course, they're both in losers, so this is technically game one. Yeah, this is absolutely 0-0. Zero, zero. We're all squared up. Oh. That could have been such a such a bigger punish. I don't understand why, especially when these oh, players the know their own character. Those Time I whipped you into shape. But yeah, both I of these players know this character. They know when they're punishing Cat Dash, but they never confirm it into a combo. They, all they do is just back two. It's very strange, especially in a situation like this where there's a background bounce behind them. They can get a full combo for free. Yeah. Wow, the back three ends up getting uh, beaten by the low whip. Could have gone for a whip punish. Just pressure. Nice. Oh, almost a good conversion, but no meter for Sonic Fox to get it. Oh. Oh, Sonic Fox didn't have meter for the uh, meter burn cat dash off the jump two. Oh, but the cartwheel will put Samij in the ground. That's 1-0 for Sonic Fox. Yeah, Samij tried to end that and make the comeback with a very weird wake-up, which is cat dash. It used to be a real wake-up in Injustice 1, but Batman. now it has no wake-up invincibility. Cat he just woman. was hoping Cat that uh, Sonic Fox would whip something or mistime his meaty because it is a very fast special. So, yeah. unfortunately, Fighters it didn't work. It was a really tough game. read. At that point, though, I feel like maybe just doing the uppercut that does have invincibility would work because that gives you a combo, too. Might have been yeah. enough. Yeah, it could have been. We'll see if Sumit turns to that option here in game two. Sonic Fox, of course, taking the lead. Oh, doesn't punish the whip throw, but finds the low whip to, once again, mark that first bar for him. One of the most important things about Injustice, right, the first hit gets awarded a meter, so those long-distance single-hit moves have a great use in those situations. on that jump. Both these players have been very consistent with anti and of course, back three. We need a back three count. Oh, wow. That was a really oh, nice juggle, man. knowing that just the, the end of that low string was good. Sonic Fox going to bounce him off the wall again. We got the corner set up. He's going to be looking for the gadget escape. Very well could. Puts him in the corner. Oh, it's oh he was looking for it. Oh, okay. Good, good guaranteed chip out. That was not a whole lot Samich could have done, but there were a lot of interactables that maybe could have gotten him out of the situation. Oh, the Sonic Fox with a huge lead, but we've seen almost, oh, wow, a backwards back two. 
I don't know exactly what that was supposed to be, but that was a huge whip. So we'll try to pull out. Wow, uses the armor from the interactable meter bird. Throw her directly into the TV. Oh, no whip punish in the back, too. That's going to be a lot of damage, though. I think Simi just has to watch out a little bit more for those whips back, too. Sonic Fox is throwing on a little bit preemptively right now. Oh, yeah, and just cancels into the car wheel. Tom Fox had a significant life lead. He's been shortened up real quick. Oh, I would like to see him just play patient. I think he's hung himself a little bit too much tonight, even though he is in the, the overall tournament lead. No, I, I agree. Uh, even, even that one time where he won, he was the first one to go in. It was exactly oh. on his map. Oh, very nice. And every time that he's gone in when he didn't need to, he's taken a lot of damage. And we saw I'm that this entire this thing fight. started because he Aww, went in when playing. he had the life lead and he could have played Sony. He could have just walked back to the interactable, used it as a defensive tool. Yeah. Oh, again, trying to get in his face. Oh! Chucked into the TV. Need to burn interactable once more. Oh, oh he tried to use it again, but it's a high. Both of these players trying to use it. Oh, 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 but the weird back three, almost a conversion by Samij. That was that is so hard to convert off of. Yeah. Try for the armor back three. Oh, oh no, that should be with punish. Wow, could have got so much more damage. Could have potentially killed, but maybe decided to try to keep it unclashable. Oh. Whoa, how did that even beat the armored back three? Win for the unclashable damage. Very smart. Sonic Fox going up 2 0. Oh. Yeah. I, I actually don't know how that cat dash didn't just get absorbed. Maybe it's because it meter burned and came back, or. Yeah, we didn't even see the flash of the armor from the back three. Like, we didn't see it absorb anything. It just seemed like yeah. the, uh, the meter burn cat dash went right through it. Maybe Samij tried to dash out of it, and, like, the instant he dashed out of it, it, it caught it. Maybe. I think so. That, I feel like that has to be it. I, yeah, I feel like it's the, that's the thing that makes sense as to visually what happened. Yeah, just because we didn't see any flash of the armor absorbing anything. So it will be a 2-0 lead, I believe. Sonic Fox here in the reset. And that is... Uh, again, a huge statement. Now, they played twice tonight. Every single bracket round that they've played has been Catwoman versus Catwoman. Now, Sonic Fox won the first one. Samij won the second one, which is why we're resetting the bracket. So this is kind of the tiebreaker. Yeah, absolutely. Although, regardless of who wins this, obviously either player could win a set against the other with Catwoman. Oh, my goodness. The armor back three initially blocked by Samij. Just waits a bit and figures, you know, that's a good option if you decided on there. Sonic Fox goes with his own. Oh, that's going to be so much damage. Just even furthering that life. All right, decided to keep it completely meterless. Oh, actually, I think he put the meter in the area. Right? Oh, catches the flip out. Samij is always ready to catch people flipping out. Yeah. Oh, he's just got incredible screen awareness, you know, and I feel like when you're talking about screen awareness against Sonic Fox, like you're talking about the other opponent's screen awareness, that's very <laughs> impressive. <laughs> Definitely. And Ooh. of course, that, that leads to how good he is at using interaction. Yeah. But wow, Sonic Fox is taking a lot of this life bar. This is actually scary, but the cat dash. Oh, no, no that, was, that was his cat dash. Yeah, no, that was he's, still cat he's still alive. <laughs> you see oh, Catwoman still is over. Oh. Okay, if, if he makes this comeback, then that is. The message will be fully sent. Oh my oh, god, he no. hit it. Full Samij. bar for Samij. Samij, you just got a break. You should have just, just clashed, and I don't know. Oh. Okay, okay. Wow. So that that was really similar to what we saw actually in the, the second set between them. There was almost a full 200% life comeback, but at the very end, I mean, all it takes is one read to, to stop that, and uh, that would have been too ridiculous of a comeback, I think, even for Sonic Fox. Yeah. A little bit too crazy. As you actually say, Samij held north there at the end right there, <laughs> got him out of dodge. Able to come down with the jump normal to uh, stuff whatever uh, Sonic Fox tried to do for a meaty. So well done from Samich. Staying alive. It's going to be 2-1. Again, this is a reset grand finals. He did beat Sonic Fox 3-2 in the original set. See if he can stay alive going to the Swamplands. Going for that weird dodge again. I don't know if that's intentional or, or what that time. Because that looked like that might have been an attempt to cat dash for a whip punish. But, oh, wow. Back to it, back to it, back to it. All right, <laughs> nice. Good choice to go for the low. Just trying to stop that mobility. That is the big, biggest advantage of having a full screen low. Oh, like great. Whip punish on the back two with his own. Oh, and the maybe cross up. That is so ambiguous. It's so hard to tell. 
thing. Saw it. Wow. Dash up into the block. No Sami just looking for that armor back three now. It's not going to save you when Sonic Fox is playing this well. And again, that's going to put him on tournament point. All he needs to do is just close out this final life bar, and he's got 100% life lead, so Samij is going to have to just play so clutch if he wants to make this. Oh, armor back three whiffs as Samij tries to close the distance. He is met with another back three, but he has one of his own, of course. Sonic Fox going down, whip to the corner. Car will once more. Plus frames and nice bait on the meter burn back three. Samij has been so good at baiting them, although, I mean, you can only bait so many. Yeah. Whip in there. Sonic Fox not looking for the anti air, just taking it. Oh, back three. Oh, it's oh. the. Oh, Sonic Fox was looking for it. And he didn't want to go into a clashable combo right there, so he just lets him fall. Yeah, but at that point, you know, maybe maybe you let him clash when you have that much of a life lead. Yeah. Uh, because that just means that your next combo or two combos will definitely kill. Right now, he's going to do a lot of unclashable damage, but he's starting to put it on the board. Oh, and then he cancels oh. into the meter for forward three into the back three to take it 3-1. <laughs> Sonic Fox in the great grand finals with Catwoman. Of course. And... We, I think we had almost every single Catwoman set end with a back three one way or another. Uh, all, of course, extremely smart ways to use them. That last one was just that there was no clash. And that, yeah. that is a huge statement. So Sonic Fox not only showing off his new main, not only playing and doing extremely well against the considered potentially best Catwoman, but also that's going to move him into a guaranteed first place spot for right now in the Injustice Pro Series points. Yeah. So that means that he's going to have to, or well, he, he's just going to be able to hold on to that seeding spot. He, uh, Dragon's going to have to like, come back, find an answer for Catwoman, bring the entire thing back, win more points than Sonic Fox again, which is going to be very tough. I mean, I'm a huge fan of players talking the talk and then walking the walk. Sonic Fox said he was going to mirror Samish. He said Catwoman is the best character in the game. <laughs> Putting himself on the map, taking first place, beating Samish in two sets. Samish, who defeated everyone else, got yeah. back to Grand Finals after losing to Sonic Fox. So, tremendous play overall from a tremendous player, Echo Fox's own. Well, what can you say? You know, I, I, I love this pick for Catwoman because I feel like a lot of the characters that he's chosen that are very good characters haven't been him. They haven't been Sonic Fox. Sonic Fox likes playing his fun characters. Fun for him is a very major thing. And I think that's a big attribute as to why he does so well. So I think now he's found a character that he has fun with and does really well. I think all together it's just meshing and it's just going to work out for him. It could be. Well, uh, I'm, you know, so looking forward to the rest of the Injustice Pro 2 Pro Series, the offline tournaments, the online tournaments. It's going to be an action-packed you know, tournament season. It already has been. I mean, Evil's over and we're not stopping. <laughs> like, there's going to be tournament on tournament on tournaments. The Injustice 2 meta is going to continue to evolve. I'm always so impressed with what the NRS players do and how they develop the meta so quickly and how it always seems different from tournament to tournament. It always seems like a certain character or a certain strategy that people underestimated or weren't aware of going into the tournament always shows up and does damage. So great stuff. I'm very uh, happy uh, that I got to commentate with you on the show. This is like our first time doing something I like know, I know. pretty serious, you know what I mean? So that was cool and an incredible top eight bracket. So yeah, I couldn't be happier. Yeah, me neither. And of course, if you all want to sign up for it, there's still the European brackets left. So go to smash.gg and it'll be on the front page. There's Europe west and east and then of course there's latin america south so if you're in any of those regions sign up you want those points you want that competition you want to potentially be on stream you want to be exactly what we saw tonight just go and sign up it's free there's no reason not to yeah so i think we will be signing off from here at twitch.tv netherrealm please continue to tune in for the injustice 2 pro series for the rest of the tournament season